Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the American Sushi Podcast featuring your hosts, Evan and Too Spooky Brandon. Hey. And today, we are joined with a very special guest, a guest that I personally am really excited to have on here, someone I've been following for a while. We will get into that shortly, but we have the Noble Absinthe, also known as Wyatt, here with us. How's everyone doing today? I'm good. Thanks for coming on with us. It's a pleasure. That's a yeah, likewise. So, I guess I'll I'll start, okay? Ooh. So the reason I found you was back in the day, you released a video about the Spoonie one from Channel Awesome. And I remember Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember that video popped off, and I found it because I was looking into like Dark Side Phil and some of his shenanigans, and that one got recommended to me. And I watched it and I was like, "Oh, this guy seems really cool, and I like this video." And I like some of the other videos I watched, and so you, you might be in the minority on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've been I've been a sub ever since, and watched you, all of your uh, Samurai Jack videos and your more recent game reviews. Yeah, that means a lot. That actually uh, that touched me a little bit right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, it's no problem. So since I stole your intro, how about you introduce yourself? Can you give me sort of a rundown of your experience on YouTube and on social media and such? I've been watching YouTube and making stupid videos that I've been deleting or uploading or whatnot since, like, the beginning of the website. Ooh. I used to make uh, stupid, like, reviews of, like, Smash Bros, but those those are gone. Um, but, you know, I think that was, like, 2017 I made the Spoonie video, and I was just, like, kind of bored one day and just sort of looked, looked him up. Because every now and again, he kind of comes back up. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, like, Spoonie binges or channel awesome because he was like one of the only ones that was really talented on that website yeah <laughs> people like people people like doug walker mm -hmm. and whatnot but the thing is he's got a neat gimmick but his voice is goat screaming and it's not really that entertaining after a while and i can't really think of anyone else besides maybe the cinema snob that's tolerable yeah i mean but yeah <laughs> angry joe had his uh own issues <laughs> come up lately I, I watched a little bit of joe i i find mm -hmm. him to be uh a, f a f fun idiot, if anything else. But <laughs> mm -hmm. I found like Spoonies was like a real character, and then you kind of found that his character was actually him. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like YouTube and social media, at least in my perspective, is kind of. We, we talked about this earlier. It's like persona. It's like the collective unconscious. Uh -huh. Like every, I, I I thought I explained myself pretty easily. Like if you make a Patreon, you make rewards, and you don't live up to those rewards. You don't live up to like what people expect of you. Like you know, they they give you money for something for a movie, and I it, like the movie was gonna suck anyway because all these guys aren't really filmmakers. But he took the money, he bought a house, and then he said nothing for years. And I'm like, that's kind of messed up. So mm -hmm. I don't know if cursing's allowed on your podcast. But oh, no, 100 percent. <laughs> Fire off. Oh, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's it's a little fucking scummy. So I just made that video, and I didn't really advertise it at all like whatsoever and before that i was making a couple naruto videos just kind of talking about some of my characters i like because i like i kind of had this anti-main character syndrome i don't really like many of the main characters unless they're really unique or deep so i made a video on sugetsu or neji or whatever oh, that's awesome. you know. and then i made the spoonie video mm -hmm. and then i'm like crap it got a thousand views in like a week and then it just kept growing and then i got people mm -hmm. telling me a bunch of stuff like you don't understand mental illness or you don't get it you know um he makes money through twitter uh he doesn't have to answer to you and i'm like i didn't say it to answer to me and then i still get those comments and i'm called a entitled fanboy or whatever and <laughs> interesting it's it's like it was like an everyday thing, and at that mm -hmm. point, I some I responded back to. I was like, yeah, just, "Just shut the fuck up!" But like, no. Um, after after a while, it's like there's no point because I made my my stance, and I even made a follow up video saying, "You know, he's he looks like he's coming back," and then he doesn't, and I'm like, "Okay, whatever, it's over." Yep. <laughs> yeah, and um, can you describe a little bit of like your your journey from then to what videos you're making now? From that, I just wanted to make videos that I enjoyed, so. I made the Samurai Jack thing because season five was coming out, mm -hmm. and I actually I actually wanted an excuse to like watch it all over again. And I like to make anything I'm doing seem a little bit productive, 
hence the reason why I make game reviews of games I'm playing, because I'm... My, re my birthday was recently, I'm 26. If I can make my my hobby of playing video games and collecting them or watching stupid stuff um, online productive, then it's fun. So season five was coming out, so I did a whole episodic review of Samurai Jack. And it is one of my favorite uh, series. It's one of those cartoons back in the heyday of Cartoon Network. Mm -hmm. um, there's still good shows nowadays, um, like regular show, but uh, Samurai Jack was just like that with um, Courage the Cowardly Dog and uh, I guess... I guess you can lump in Dexter's Lab too, but I liked all that generation of uh, nostalgia, mm -hmm. so I went with I went with it. it. Seemed like it made sense, and also I like Japanese culture, and Samurai Jack has a lot of it. And then afterwards, I kind of uh, contacted Extra Mana because he was doing some Channel Awesome stuff. Because I figured, oh, my Spoonie thing made a lot of stuff, so maybe I can do something with that. Mm -hmm. And I did a cha my Channel Awesome stuff. I guess it depends on the contributor because with Cinema Snob I got three thousand views, but with Angry Joe got five thousand. And again, these are these are peanuts. I I don't make a lot of views off this, but for the most part, I like to do videos on. I like to either do big projects like series stuff, or uh -huh. I like to make isolated stuff. So mm -hmm. I did a video on Kenny versus Spenny as TV tropes, and one on Sawamura Ryuhei from Hajime no Ippo. It's a boxing anime, mm -hmm. and I like to analyze and break stuff down. And if my viral video on the handler is any indication. YouTube is just one messed up algorithm that doesn't make any sense. So if I get any, <laughs> if I get any views, it, it's it's just that it's random. See, uh, I know at the beginning here, Evan introduced how like he found your channel, but as far as like I found it, it's actually like a really funny story, right? So uh, only like probably two or three days before Evan texted me saying hey we should have this guy on the podcast i was like wait why does that name sound so familiar and it's because literally just a few days before that i was uh editing a video about um devil fruit reincarnation right in one piece and uh there was one part where i had to talk about uh big mom you know spoiler alert here consuming uh the person who had the fruit previously so i was looking up clips for it because like it's such a a very short part of the video i was like i don't really want to you know rip an episode or try to illegally download it so i was looking for clips on the good old youtube <laughs> and i came across your video um talking about how the anime kind of like butchered that whole sequence and i was like oh well i should check this out like what's going on here and i was like oh man i liked this and then you know two days later right after i discover your channel evan's like hey i really like this guy we should have him on the podcast i was like whoa that's like such a weird coincidence <laughs> out of nowhere but um i guess you know for having you know watched some of your videos now and just taking a look at your channel as a whole it's it's pretty clear that you've taken like a lot of different creative routes over time so i i looked and saw that you know your channel's been around since about like 2011 right uh have you had any channels before that or is this the only one you've been making content on uh i used to go by the name like mon doggy on my uh, it was just a broken name of moon doggy from Eureka 7, but yeah, just 2006 I made the account and just uploaded dumb videos, but it wasn't until like 2017 where I wanted to actually make stuff, so, mm -hmm. like serious. So I feel like with, um, you know, obviously over time, you know, we evolve, like as creators, what we enjoy, all that stuff, so would you say like a lot of times the content that you're making like in different time periods is more a reflection of like what's inspiring you the most during those times or is it just like the kind of content that you would maybe want to see if you were a viewer type of thing or how do you decide like what type of content you're making all throughout all these different time periods across your channel uh, definitely on impulse more than anything else. <laughs> like i did a video about this one youtuber who was and i, I decided to download his ebook and it was like how to get a lot of subscribers or whatnot because I, I, I want I was like it's been like two years into this or whatever and I want to actually see what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And the guy was like, "Man, I lost thirty two thousand subscribers. You have no idea what that's like. I I lost. That's more people than in my hometown. Well, I mean, Jesus. Anyway, uh -huh. he's like, I lost thirty two thousand people in January because apparently they're bots or whatever. Um, I don't think they're bots, and it's it shows his drop-off point on like social link he lost thirty-two thousand people and he makes videos where he goes he makes these fake videos where it's like uh his name is like teching realm or something so he had like a 101 video on how to get five thousand subscribers in like 
a week. And I'm like, this is nonsense. <laughs> and it is and it, with no video. And I'm like, yeah, this is total nonsense. Sweet. So he does yeah. like, he, he does videos on like getting lots and lots and says, oh, it's so easy. And he's just kind of a smug prick. So <laughs> I made an impulse video on that. And it's like, you lost an entire city of people because they're fake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you see this a lot with people. I think it's just a tactic to incite a little bit of drama and get people mad so that they can reclick on your video to reply. But recently, not recently, but YouTube has this reply feature where you can click on like your notifications and then reply there so you don't have to give the person another view. Because back in the old days, you had to click on the video to reply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But yeah. Um, th this guy. There's there's this other YouTuber. Not YouTuber, but uh, content creator. It's such a weird phrase. Um, <laughs> his name is like Last of Ken or something. He makes compilation videos. So he'll take like the funniest videos from like King of the Hill or funniest clips from Family Guy. And he'll make a top 25. Like the Dale Gribble is the most... 25 times Dale Gribble was woke. And <laughs> it's literally just copied from other videos on YouTube that someone ripped. And then his mm -hmm. his st his sticky phrase is like for some reason YouTube decided to monetize me uh, for this vi <laughs> for, for, for for this Great. video. Appar appa apparently in 2020 you can just demonetize people for whatever reason possible. And then people are like, well, it's like this isn't fair use. How is this not fair use? There's clearly edits. I'm like, shut <laughs> shut up. Yeah, I honestly hate stuff like that. What kind of um one thing that I always like giggle to myself about is when I'll go to like you know anybody's channel right and. In the description of their video or like before the video starts they'll have like that copyright disclaimer and it's like you honestly think that's gonna help you <laughs> like people are like posting like you know like their whole channel's based on like let's say anime clips right like that is not fair use in the slightest just because you cut it up a little bit doesn't necessarily make it yours like you're still playing the audio you're still showing the scene there's no like there's nothing in this video that makes it you right so it's There's not, nothing that they did to this video yeah like it's not transformative it, in the slightest it, basically no so they still have this like oh this is fair use like this disclaimer says so so uh give me money it's just it just bothers me you know unless you break the entire piece of media over your kneecaps and just like use stills and like i i've been guilty of using like some filters like some sparkle filters just so i can play a little bit of the video to show what i'm talking about uh -huh. but mm -hmm. But YouTube knocks me for that. Um, oh, man. But, w but when it comes down to, like, I, I can watch regular show on YouTube right now. And it's either, like, and people have gotten, like, really crazy about it. Like, you can, they'll zoom in, like, 200% on a single shot. Or they'll cut out every 30 seconds of continuous video. Or they'll do, like, mm -hmm. what those fam th those mass family guy YouTubers <laughs> do. Like, they'll make the video exactly... They figured out this algorithm. Like, people what? say, oh, they, they, they don't understand the, the formula of YouTube. But get this shit, right? They'll make the video 4 minutes and 16 seconds for, like, all of them. If you look up any family guy, like... And it says, like, uh, there's one where Chris Griffin is the biggest boy. And it's only, like, 2 seconds of the episode. But they'll make the video, like, 5 minutes and 13 seconds long. And it's really weird. It just... People figure this stuff out. I don't I don't know how. Or they just do trial and error. And then it's the same person with 15 other channels. <laughs> and, and, and I just... And though I can't prove it, I can almost guarantee they're making money off of this. Because yeah. why would you ever do that? Why would yourself? you do that just for fun? I don't, think, I don't know that anyone would just pick that up and be like, I would like 15 different channels doing this, please. Well, what if they're just really passionate about Family Guy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you can you honestly rule that out? You know what I mean? I mean, I know you're a big Family Guy super freak, Brandon, so would you do this? Uh, I mean, maybe. Are if... you doing this? <laughs> well, like, you gotta think, like, back in the day, like, when YouTube was literally the Wild West, I mean, yeah. so many people, including myself, was just like, you know, t like, take an AMV, for instance, right? Like, at the end of the day, like, at the end of the day, you're not making, you're not making <laughs> any money off it, you're literally just doing it for fun. So uh -huh. I imagine, like, some people definitely have that mindset and like you know they like oh i really enjoy this this is really funny i just want to show it to other people because i can't find it anywhere like on mm -hmm. youtube so maybe that's why a lot of people especially back then would do it but these days it is definitely motivated by money like i'm not going to deny that at all right it's the yeah. sad truth you know what i'd like to see a revival of what's that runescape music videos me can too you start, can you can both of you please start that i don't upload videos but uh I'll make uh, that request. I mean, I I'll think, think about everyone it. Everyone would like it. 
I'll, I'll think about it. That's the only promise I'm going to give you. Sweet. I actually, I actually remember that that era. Uh huh. That's oh. where I started. <laughs> like, yeah, Brandon, his first hand experience in RuneScape yeah, music my, videos. My first channel was back in 2008, doing RuneScape music videos. Is how I learned how to edit back in the day, and then oh, eventually yeah. that transitioned to the good old AMVs. A couple that's of. That's how I. That's how I found out about the band Bloodhound Gang. When uh, you guys ever listen to like Foxtrot, Uniform, Charlie Kilo, or uh. I can't say I have myself. No, I don't know that I've heard of those. What genre of music is it? That's kind of the hard part about uh -huh. Bloodhound Gang, is you can't really describe it. It's, <laughs> okay. It's kind of poppy, and it's vulgar, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. this, it, it's kind of like a... If you ever listen to the, bear, na uh, the band Bare Naked Ladies, it's kind of like that. It's, okay. it's just a bunch of r random lyrics. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, I, I found a bunch of RuneScape... Uh, like music videos like that and mm -hmm. they were kind of cute back in the day and i was like this this website's kind of neat but yeah mm -hmm. like that was it's my introduction fun. to youtube was all just runescape junk but i think the very first one the very first video was like um my friend introduced me to like naruto amvs yes and <laughs> and oh. the very the very very first video was like I, it was crazy it was lincoln it's lincoln park naruto versus sasuke valley of the end and it was the same video by different creators <laughs> making the same it's it's it was it was Naruto versus Sasuke Of course it was <laughs> in, in, in Naruto versus Sasuke in the end AMV Yep oh well, that doesn't surprise me in the slightest <laughs> 5 stars for all of them when we had a star system oh, which hell was way yes, better the that best. was the best that was so good <laughs> Now we have the like and dislike ratio. It's really, yeah. yeah. I just was watching a video that talked about that. It's kind of fascinating that they went from five different options down to two. Because yeah. you could rate a video one through five stars. That's five options. But now you could do, they eliminated the essentially the two, three, and four. And now you either one star or five star video. Yeah. And on top of that, too, they've also considered getting rid of dislikes a couple times. Mm -hmm. So it would just be like only, you know, oh, did you like this? Click. If not, well, I mean, I guess you can slander him in the comments or something, but other than that, you're kind of out of luck. Well, and that's, that's, a mu that's a mundane Matt response. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got some good references today, Wyatt. <laughs> mundane Matt. I haven't heard that in a while. I don't know who that is. He's the boulder guy. That, okay. So, I heard you touch on, <laughs> I heard you touch on earlier, Wyatt, that um, you have an anti-main character syndrome. So, I'm really interested in that. So, what... So Suigetsu is one of my favorite Naruto characters, so hearing you talk about him was top-notch. But, like, are there any other anime where the main character specifically bothers you? Because I'm, I'm, I sense because you use that example, Naruto isn't your favorite of that yeah. series. Yeah, I, I don't like to be a contrarian mm -hmm. when it comes down to things. I just like what I like. Sure. Like, in Pokemon, I hate Ash, which I don't think is, like, surprising. I don't think that's a hot take. <laughs> yeah, it's not a hot take at all. Mm -mm. But, like, in Yu-Gi-Oh!, like, this is not a hot take either. I don't really like the main character that much. I uh -huh. like Kaiba m more than Yugi. Um, in Bleach, I okay. absolutely despise Ichigo. <laughs> I don't know if... Ooh, that might no, because he's literally... He's literally everything. But, like, yeah. I get... He, he's, he's a uh -huh. cool guy. He's a cool guy, but there's just... He's a... He's a proxy character, so yeah. essentially everyone, he's kind of meant to be sort of neutral, which is fine. He's kind of like Yu Narakami, or I guess, I don't know mm -hmm. which one came first. And I like Yu as a main character. Yeah. But um, in Bleach, like, my favorite character is Kenpachi. Like, I like characters that, I guess the reason I like Kenpachi is because he's so voracious, he's so angry and powerful, uh -huh. and has a strong personality, in which contrasts well with... Uh, Ichigo is more neutral, generic uh, shonen protagonist. Yeah, absolutely. I guess I just like more to him. Like mm -hmm. in Yu Yu Haka, you ever watch a Yu Yu Haka show? Oh, yep. That's yeah. an example. Mm -hmm. That's an example of one where I like the main character because Yusuke is awesome. That's one where you have to watch yeah. it in dub. Yep, oh, I sure. like it dubbed too. For I'm sure. A pretty strict sub guy, but I like that one and Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, dub I, for yeah. sure. I, I usually just look up what people's general consensus is. And then I'll give the dub a shot if people say it's pretty good. But if I am like, oh, I hate that voice, I just go right to sub. <laughs> but usually, I don't know, I found some good dubs through that method. Like, uh, I know you have watched Monster, Wyatt, but I know Evan hasn't. But um, yeah. <laughs> the dub for Monster, I heard Tenma's voice, and I was like, I can't do it. I am I cannot listen to that voice for however many episodes. So I, <laughs> I went right to sub after the first episode. And that was one of the best decisions I've ever made, honestly. But... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, setting a low bar I, there. I, I love Monster a lot. It's like actually where like you get interested in like firearms and safety and like it's a really incredible mystery about Johan and everything. So yeah, oh yeah, Monsters like you should definitely watch it, Evan. It's a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. I'll add or that read it. to my list. Hey, I probably hey, would hey. read it. it. It's oh, I've heard the manga is better, honestly, but they're oh, okay. basically this. I think it's just a pacing thing, but mm-hmm. it is great. Interesting. Well, yeah, I definitely would say I remember the Kenpachi versus Ichigo fight, like the the initial fight in the yeah. best arc. Um, <laughs> I remember that very vividly, and I can't say I remember very many other fights that vividly. So I, I for sure understand Kenpachi being a top tier um, pseudo antagonist because he was an antagonist then, but then you know does yeah. his thing. So is that like a character type you could say that you enjoy a lot, like the Kenpachi type? Um, yeah, in Hajime no Ippo, I like uh, Takamura Momoru, if you ever watch that series. I have I not, haven't. but I, I <laughs> it's on my list it's, to get to pretty soon. Ooh. Yeah, essentially, I like characters that actually show, like, confidence. Right? Like, I like the idea of, because I watched Neon Genesis Evangelion. Oh boy. Eh. And I, I like the spiritual journey of coming to age. I'm also a fan of Spirited Away, so I like the stories of characters having that arc mm-hmm. and uh-huh. going from weak to strong well in neon genesis the the canon ending is is him breaking down into depression but point is like <laughs> i like characters that have a little bit of confidence because it's a nice change of pace like in helsing ultimate alucard is just badass incarnate mm-hmm. and that's a character i really like i also like alexander anderson a, a lot as well maybe it's relates to toxic masculinity and it's not a great thing to like but uh it's a nice change of pace mm-hmm. to the characters that have to be neutral and whatnot well this kind of transitions into a question that i had for you actually so how do you feel about good old vegeta from dragon ball would you say that he's like a favorite for you because he because he definitely has like that confidence but the problem with him is that almost every time he like he sucks well it's he comes up and he's like (laughs) i'm the prince of all saints i'm the best screw get off out of here kakarot and then he just gets wrecked every time but like he still has you know that very uh that forward attitude very cocky so, like, it kind of falls into that character type, but he doesn't have necessarily the power to back it up most of the time. Yeah. So, like, the question I, I had was because you made a video about um, uh, stupid Dragon Ball characters. Uh, do you remember that one? Uh, it's been a while, but I put Gotenks on there. Yeah. Um, well, your number that... one was Krillin, and I was I wanted Absolutely to see, like, right. um, well, see, I don't Correct. necessarily agree. I, I feel like Vegeta well. is by far... Like he's made, made, like in my opinion, he made by far the stupidest decision in Dragon Ball from my memory. But I just wanted to see if you still thought that way for one. But I guess um, your opinion of Vegeta overall, since we're on the topic of you know those toxic masculinity characters. I, I guess when it comes to toxic masculinity, like regardless of how I want to look at it, like the ends justify the means a lot when it comes down to writing. Mm-hmm. So if a character is story, uh, writers go back and forth on this, but. Yeah, Vegeta, I want to say I objectively like him more than Goku, but I don't think he'd be one of my favorites, okay. though. I, there's, there's Goku, personally, I've I've had a love-hate relationship with this character. I like that he's, on paper, he's good, but I've gotten into arguments with people online, and I this is why I don't like the Dragon oh, Ball community. The uh, <laughs> like, first of, like, first of all, the whole... Goku versus Superman thing. I I stay away from that with like a like a like like it's cool. I stay away from that as much as possible. I've always liked Vegeta more than Goku, but I don't know. Maybe he'd be in the top ten. My favorite character is probably Trunks, oh. and I, I don't think that's yeah, surprising. Yep. Not, maybe not Dragon Ball Super Trunks, but like definitely like history oh. of Trunks and uh, the entire. See, I just couldn't do Dragon Ball Super. Like, I got thirty episodes in, and I was like, this sucks, so I just stopped. <laughs> but <laughs> but I like the progression. Like visually speaking, of Vegeta shedding off his Saiyan armor and then taking up the, just slowly losing each piece of that and becoming more and more uh-huh. human. He does a heel face turn in the Buu saga. Oh yeah, which is again gives me credence to say if Goku's like, oh you know, I've, I'm gonna stay dead. I'm gonna leave my pregnant <laughs> wife behind. And even though I have, e- even though even though I have literal fucking God as a cell phone. I'm going to be like, you know what, I'm never going to call her because, you know, the dead are meant to stay dead. <laughs> but at the first opportunity I can come back, I'm going to come back. <laughs> and, you know, you see that character development that just came with Vegeta? You know, he shed his Saiyan armor, he's actually spending time with his son, taking him to fucking amusement parks. Let me just break all that. Because now that I'm back, Vegeta has a reason to go evil 
And therefore, Vegeta then has a reason to go through a redemption arc where he fucking kills himself. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's all a domino effect. The reason I just despise Vegeta so much, which is something that you did touch on in your video, but it's just the whole thing during the Cell Saga, when like he's just beating the absolute lard out of second form Cell over here, and then Cell's like, uh, hey, you know, I can get stronger. And Vegeta just lets him do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then he just gets his ass handed to him, bro. Like, I was so mad when I read that. Because, like, I, I didn't watch Dragon Ball. I, I, other than, like, a couple fights, I read the whole thing. Yeah. So, man, I was pissed. Like, <laughs> I was on the fence about Vegeta the whole time, but that solidified my dislike of him right there. And I do like, you know, kind of the, the path they were taking with him in the Boo Saga and then kind of, like, what they were doing in Super as well. But, man... It, it's hard for me to look past that, I have to say. That's why he's, like, my number one for, uh, you know, the stupid ball, as you called it. But yeah. uh, we can move on from that. It's just something I wanted to bring <laughs> up. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Yeah, so um, I guess we definitely will probably pivot back to anime. But with regards to games, you've been doing a lot of, I guess this is with anime, um, of Berserk games recently. Um, reviews and sort mm -hmm. of um, you uploaded the movie, like the cutscenes of the one. How in the world did you find these? And how did you, like, did you emulate them or purchase them? Or, and, like, which one would you say is the I, best Berserk game? I still have to play Band of the Hawk on the PS4, but that's just a Dynasty uh -huh. Warriors clone. But, uh, yeah, they were always kind of, like, in my library. So, like, you look up Berserk video mm -hmm. game, and th they're the ones that kind of pop up. And one's, like, a Japanese exclusive. I'm like, ah, oh, crap. But there's English translation. So I had to emulate the PS2 one. Uh-huh. I use a software called Launchbox, which is like is a front end program that houses all emulators. Oh, okay. Um, I am a game. I've been meaning to get my hands on a copy of um, the Berserk Dreamcast one. I would I would definitely say the PS2 one is the best one. And to emulate it, I use PC SX2. Yep. And there's a entire forum uh, dedicated to uh, dedicated to fixing these problems. Okay. So so I go on there and cutscenes won't play um your hud won't show mm -hmm. so i went through quite a i went through quite a time to get this uh this game to work and as i was playing it i was like this this was really great in the beginning so i, I do describe yep. early on in the video that it teaches you pretty straightforward how to use the controls and it's kind of like an early version of sekiro uh -huh. if you really want to get into because it, it has a, a parry system a counter and it's really awesome but then it sort of drags on and um Actually, before I was playing it, I messaged this other uh, YouTuber about it, because he was also he also covered a lot of uh -huh. Berserk games, and you know we kind of came up to the same conclusion about it is there's a lot of good in here, and then ultimately it just needed more polish and didn't really deliver on that. And then when you get to the Band of the Hawk on um, on PS4, it's just if you play one Dynasty Warrior game, yeah. you play them all. And I remember watching your review of the PS2 one. And I, I, I'm not sure the specific wording, but I know you mentioned Dark Souls in it. And it just kind of clicked in me, like, why there needs to be a Berserk Dark Souls-esque like game. I feel like that game style is perfect for the, the themes and the philosophies within Berserk. Yeah, if they can just make, like, a mod or something mm -hmm. with it, that'd be great. But uh, most of Dark Souls is a reference. Yep. It, most I think the entire Dark Souls franchise is just a love letter yeah, to Berserk. Yeah, I could for sure see that. There's comparisons to like Griffith's armor. There's um, obviously the the ultra great swords that never existed in history are all references to like mm -hmm. guts. Yeah, there's like I think there's helmets of like femto in Dark Souls, but I don't remember. It's been like two years since I played yeah. the trilogy. Yeah, I think it just the the despair like that's sort of the the main theme of Dark Souls. Like you go and you die and you make more progress and you die and all of that. And I think. I, I said this a long time ago. An entire and, and someone got mad at me on my oh. review. <laughs> an, ent an, an, an entire like video game company, FromSoft, uh -huh. was able to be was able to be born, create several games before Dark Souls, create the Dark Souls franchise, create mm -hmm. Bloodborne, and then create Sekiro, and like begin an entire franchise of Dark Souls and then finish it, and we're still not fucking done with Berserk. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well. Like think about that. Uh -huh. It's an entire an entire video game company was able to make a franchise, become a pop culture phenomenon, yeah. and then finish its story, and then 
Berserk is still like I just make it a novel. Yeah. Uh huh. Just, just just finish, finish it. it. Did you hear about the uh, the light novel about the uh, what's his name Grunbeld? I think. I, I've seen the cover for it. I haven't I haven't read it myself, and I'm like that. That's exactly what yeah. I would want happen. Just make it a novel. Uh, unfortunately, I have heard that that light novel is pretty bad. To be honest. Oh, good. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um. Yeah, hiatus is really upsetting. I mean, I guess yep. the, the one hindsight is that we have gotten the Berserk chapter this year, and we're going to get another one this month, which is really nice, you know? it's. I'd rather have some just, like, spaced out instead of, like, oh, it's going to be a year, and then maybe you'll see one. You'll get, like, two or three in a row, and then nothing. Yeah, I like, but as you know, Evan, like, we read a couple series that are on hiatus, uh-huh. and uh, it's rough. Cause I, I don't know if you've watched Hunter x Hunter. I don't think you have, but... The manga for that is still ongoing, and uh, it's been a long time now since we've had a chapter, honestly. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really upsetting to just wait that long for just, you know, a maybe. Yeah, I've heard of that series. It, was that one? It's that has like a that that has a Yu Yu Hakusho. Yeah, vibe. it's, it's by the same same, same, same manga. Same manga. It, mm-hmm. Honestly, oh, I'd say it's better by I far. I like it better than Yu Yu. But, but Yu Yu is still like great. Basically, all the things that he was going for in Yu Yu are just kind of like improved upon. They're taking the, to eleven. Yeah. I'd recommend it, but mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, no spoils, though. No spoils. No. And the, the anime is really good, too. That's what I watched, and then I was so, like, invested I wanted to read the rest of it. And now, yeah. like, the arc that they're in right now has a, a billion intricacies and, like, politics and stuff without spoilers. Like, a lot of information that these hiatuses make me go, like, five to ten chapters back whenever we get a new <laughs> one. And I'm like, I still don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. But, um... Yeah, it's just sad about Berserk, though, that it's been... It's almost, like, what, 30 years now? It's been going for about that long, give or take, and it's still not complete. Yep. (laughs) And I think in that PS2 review video, I really liked how you broke down your your review scores. Can you touch on that a little bit um, while we've got you here? Yeah, sure. You know Chris Stuckman? Yep, yep, I I know. (laughs) Yeah. Big fan. I like him a lot. So... So like he he referenced Roger Ebert and uh-huh. I like that a lot. Like give give every film its day in court, and essentially like that just means to kind of go in with a you know level head and it's it's impossible to go in with like no bias sure. at all. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm like if if I'm gonna watch a horror movie or play a horror game, I'm I'm expecting at least a scare uh-huh. or something. But for for the most part, like the way like Game Informer or IGN or whatever like these, yep. these companies are. Are, pay, are paid off to give big scores to games that don't matter. But I like to start off at a 5 and just say, you know, that, and it kind of like reflects my general mood. So like a 5 is like, ah, oh, it was kind of a bland experience. And then you go plus or minus, so 6 would be okay, Seven's good, great, then you go to amazing, and then 10 is like perfect. And perfect to me, and people hate this, my, my friend Jason always had a problem with when I gave like, say, Pikmin 2, I think that's uh-huh. perfect, but oh i i could nitpick this and at that point you're nitpicking yeah. like mm-hmm. like there's no there's no such thing as a perfect food but if you cook a, if you ask a chef for if you ask like the waitress or whatever to get you your your medium rare steak mashed potatoes and a, a blue hawaii a blue hawaii <laughs> and everything tastes uh-huh. great and it tastes like the reference value of what it's supposed to be that's it whereas like something like a four is there's a game in there that's good but there's like a couple like problems with it like gameplay elements that annoy me three is fundamentally bad like duke, duke or whatever. Like, it's functionally, it, it 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 functionally works but it's not like it's not broken it's just not fun it's just oh, i loved i loved that then, video that was so good that took me back and and then two out of ten is like sonic 06 like that broken. that game actually you actually have it's fundamentally like broken like you actually have to do specific things to make the thing work mm-hmm. and actually like not fall through the floor and one is is it's literally unfinished like action 52 everyone says like what's the worst game in in all of history of gaming it's people bring up et but you can actually beat that game it's like that's a two but like action 52 50 out of the 52 games are broken (laughs) they don't actually work oh man i just looked up action 52 because i've never heard of it and it's got some real doozies of uh pixel art in it (laughs) some it was it was like it was like three hundred dollars. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> well, I definitely like the idea that you're willing to give things a ten 
because I've always like, you know, some people are there like, well, there is no such thing as a 10 out of 10 because nothing's perfect, right? I feel like as long mm -hmm. as, you know, everything that you would look for in like whatever medium you're rating, right? As long as it hits all those yeah. boxes that you would want it to, I feel like, you know, as long as it, or, and like it goes above and beyond too, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like as long as it hits those um, criteria, I feel like a 10 out of 10 can definitely be warranted. Like obviously a 10 for you is not going to be a 10 for everybody. But the fact that it can right. even reach that for you in, as an individual is still something I feel a lot of reviewers should be willing to do. But, like, I've yeah, definitely come absolutely. across reviewers who are like, well, I'm just not never going to give a 10 out of 10. Like, mm -hmm. I, the farthest I'll go is a 9 because it's near perfect, but I, uh, perfect doesn't exist. So, <laughs> can you tell us some of your 10 out of 10 games? Uh, sure. Um, so, like, a lot of, like, the classic games, the ideal 10 out of 10 I always bring back Pikmin is, like, Pikmin 2. 2. It... It, it expands on the original idea of the game. It with, with Nintendo's design philosophy is that they make games, they come in with a central like ethos. So, micro Pikmin Two is based off of micromanagement, uh -huh. which you say that like I want to make a game about micromanaging, and it's <laughs> like that sounds fucking awful. terrible. Yep. <laughs> but like we have games like Starcraft, so that's micromanaging. Uh -huh. Like so, I wanted to make it fun. I wanted to make it cute. And I wanted to make an entire, like, I wanted to make it, like, puzzle-based and whatnot. And I want to have people figure out how to organize their time and make it challenging and give that long-lasting appeal. So, like, even nowadays, if you play Pikmin 2, because it has cartoony graphics that stand the test of time and then it has very beautiful visuals, even though those might be dated a little bit now, um, it's... It's just an amazing experience and there's nothing i can really nitpick about uh -huh. it it's just really fun micromanagement micromanagement <laughs> is fun beating be, beating the clock mm -hmm. but yeah uh another 10 out of 10 uh let's see monster hunter most like generation uh it's called double x in japan but monster hunter generations for the switch uh -huh. and monster hunter world i even though i hate the handler a lot i try to divorce myself of the idea that uh story elements can drag it down unless the game is truly like a hundred percent yeah. tied to it so like the handler is a small part of a game that's really has its roots tied in like an mmorpg so you grind for materials so that you can make armor so you can grind to get more materials but the thing is you look at monster Hunter and nothing besides maybe dark souls can really yeah. compete with it it has such intelligent ai it has this breathing world and it's been around since the ps2 era so they keep adding to it and making it like better and better and mm -hmm. better and then some of the other like some classic like uh banjo kazooie and tui are like the best platformers i've ever played if you ever played them no i haven't i've watched them be played though and i've, yeah, I've had fun just watching them so i mean i'm not a big platformer i like jrpgs a lot and then um like action rpgs like i've played monster hunter world um played all the dark souls games stuff like that is what i sort of latch on to just that's just what I had growing up, essentially, is where where, where that's drawn me. But like stuff like um, like the Persona mm -hmm. series, like I can't like that's very tied to story. So I think the way they cover sexual identity issues, how they cover like uh, the murder case, yeah. it, it, Persona Four is really like Persona Scooby Four is top meets, tier. I would I would say that's ten out of ten. Yeah, but the thing is, like, you compare that gameplay to something like. Mario 64 uh -huh. or something and it it doesn't work because they're different yep. genres obviously. So I have to go with how I feel about it. So the one of the other recent games I played and I had a really hard time giving it. I, I gave it a 9 because I just couldn't help myself. It was Valkyria Chronicles 4. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's it's got something called the Blitz system, which is where you control character you have a it's get this, it's a turn-based real-time strategy game doesn't make any yeah. sense when you say it that <laughs> way but you get you like phase one you start in a top-down perspective you click your unit so it can be like a person who uses a mortar it takes place during like a fictional like world mm -hmm. war ii so you got like snipers uh stormtroopers guys with machine guns you've got scouts and you select the unit that you want to go into on the uh map selection screen you click like the scout and then you zoom in to the battlefield and you get to yep. control the scout in real time so it's a third person but the story is so integral to everything in the game and I just felt like the story had such a strong start and then it just got really really stupid at the mm -hmm. end and it was such a pivotal thing about the game so I 
I don't want to make like a weighted grading scale because there's this there's this one guy on YouTube folding ideas who came up with the idea of like, you know, I, w I want to see Detective Pikachu in the movie theater. So I have a five point grading scale of how much I, I like the movie. So these are the criteria for my analysis. How many jokes are in the movie? What? How much Ryan Reynolds made what? me laugh? <laughs> what? Oh, cool. The, 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 the CGI mm -hmm. and the soundtrack and, and the soundtrack. Since story is subjective, I will not put oh, that good. in. And, the, and, and, then he, and then he gave everything a 5 out of 5. And then that means Detective Pikachu is the best movie ever created. Well, and it's like, uh, eh, well. no. Yeah. So, so that's, that's, where the, that's where the subjectiveness yeah. has to uh -huh. come into it. You can't mathematically break down art, and it's just kind of a fruitless effort. Mm -hmm. So Valkyria Chronicles, there's this, um, without spoiling too much, because it, it really is a fun game, there's this character who's like, He's a good guy. He's a sniper on your side. And then he swaps over to the... He basically becomes a Nazi because he wants to save abducted 10-year-old uh, girls. Because 10-year-old girls are used as power sources for nuclear bombs. Oh. And once I got that <laughs> twist in that game, I'm like, this has gone stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like, you guys were awesome. You the, the, the first half of the game is actually, like, believable World War II mixed in with anime uh -huh. nonsense. And yeah. I liked it. And then we get to, there's this pink-haired, because they have uh -huh. to be pink-haired, because they're <laughs> yes. special, pink-haired 10-year-old girl who goes into a ship, and then she's literally a nuclear generator. I'm like, this, what what happened? No, stop it. And I'm like, I can't divorce that out of my head. The story takes too much precedence uh -huh. in the game. So if the game was just World War II anime, it'd be yeah. a 10. But then you brought in a lot of weird shit that didn't make any sense and I have to knock it down a point. Some people can, that's why I said in my other review, teetering on a five for Bomberman uh -huh. X-Zero, because a lot of people hate that game. That's like one of the original like video games reviewed on like YouTube by Armic 21 He literally took the game out and pissed on it. So he gave Sweet. that a zero. <laughs> and I played it, and like, this game just, it's Bomberman. It's okay, but I have one life, and it uh -huh. sucks. So if it's okay, or it's over neutral it's five and then one annoying thing that was pretty pertinent knocked it down to uh to a four so i, I like to think i'm level-headed on things yeah i i just followed a, a twitter account that says things rated lower than fortnite on ign or something like that because ign um reviewed fortnite as a 9.6 and it's got like <laughs> <laughs> ocarina of time and stuff like that like known classics ranked lower than yeah. 9.6 so it just that when you were talking earlier on about I, um, like review companies and stuff like that, it just made me reminded me of that. But I think there is for sure a difficult line between subjective opinion and objective facts about the game. And I really like the way you described it. Yeah, I like to keep it as like it's it's supposed to be case mm -hmm. by case. And for like Fortnite, I, I've played that back when it was an alpha. I played it when it wasn't like Battle Royale. It was just a zombie simulator. And I have that game twice over. My friend gifted it to me, and then I had the other one on PC. Uh-huh. Excuse me. Um, and I, I played it, and I was like, this is fine. It's tower defense, and it's good. And then apparently PUBG became a big thing, and then my friend's like, don't ever play Fortnite again. And it's like, why? They sold out. They're now a Battle Royale game. I don't even know what that is and then Fortnite became the mainstream game that everyone plays and it's just I, I saw one video by Keemstar about this one player within like two seconds he's able to build an intricate fucking tower that he can stand on and snipe people I'm like that that's insane that's where the game died honestly. I'm not because <laughs> <laughs> um like the players the players can DI so well and it's like I I'm never playing this I just don't have the fingers mm -hmm. for it. I don't know. It was fun for a long time, honestly. I think um, the one thing that Fortnite had, like, on top of other Battle Royales, was that uh, you could just goof around the whole game, and, like, you uh -huh. could still do really well, honestly. Like, there was a lot of times where we would just do really stupid stuff with, like, like a bunch of our good old pals, and uh, they were great times, honestly. Whereas something like, you know, take uh, Apex Legends... You can't really goof around. It's all just a bunch of people sweating on each other the whole game. Like, if you get shot, like, you're going to die. Whereas in Fortnite, you know, you can dance around. Maybe they'll be like, all right, you know what? We're going to let you live. You know, you could just hide in bushes the whole game. Like, <laughs> yep, hey. You could just run strategy. up on, and T-pose on people. Like, there's a lot of goofy stuff you could do. But 
it, it's definitely died when it came to um you know what what's the word the uh players got way too good versus the average player the power creep i don't know if that's right but <laughs> that's what happened with fortnite yeah. i hate power to say. creep fortnite cool <laughs> yeah the power that, creep. that gen that generally happens with like games that have a good amount of time to sit mm-hmm. so like back when uh, smash came out for like the wii u or whatever or like even on the switch there's always an influx of like new players that are really like you know they this is their first experience yeah. in smash bros right and then eventually they get tired of it and they go into the next game and then you have all the veterans who are like, well, I'm going to cave your uh-huh. head in. Especially if you go online. So that's... <laughs> With the Switch's yeah. online system, oh boy. I have a lot of fun there. I'm still trying to learn how to play Joker. <laughs> of but course. I go back and just... <laughs> but I, I go back to play Ike because that's what I'm best mm-hmm. at. I love King DDD. Do you... Oh, the meme king. The big gay dance. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I just in Smash Bros. Like I, I'm definitely not I, great at it, but I would say like I really enjoy the big bulky mm-hmm. characters rather than the ones who can like get yeah. one shotted off the thing because they're so light and fluffy. Yeah, yeah I play uh, DK as my heavy because he has a very similar set to Ike when you um when you forward air. Oh, okay. Yeah, he has yeah. That big swipe. I like uh, Inkling in Smash Ultimate. That was my main. Oh, I can never get. I can never. I love Inkling's design. Uh-huh. I like. Uh, I like Splatoon, but I can never like I can never play that character. Yeah, I'm not good at like zoning. I think that's a zoning character is the term. I'm not good at that, but I like playing that character anyways. <laughs> I'm I've the only fighting game I've ever been all right at was uh, Mortal Kombat Nine. Bet. Yeah, we got really sweaty at that game. We were rough. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, you can claim sweat. I only had one character. You had. 87 i was definitely like you know if you look down below my feet there would be a puddle of sweat when it came to Mortal Kombat <laughs> 9 i played that every day for yeah, a very long like time our post high like very recent post high school game and brandon played it like every day in high school like yeah it was <laughs> wrote bad. down combos and shit Jeez. it like it was bad like i would go into king of the hill lobbies and just sit there and like dunk on everybody until you know you meet the actual pro player and then you're like frick man I didn't even get it hidden. I have this uh, close knit of friends that we play Smash Bros mm-hmm. all the time, and uh, you know we, we'd always like figure out how each how each of us thought. So like someone would drop down and try to do a counter to safely make it back to the stage or something, which I guess is bad practice or, or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But we all thought we were actually really good, and then I knew because I, I went to a couple Smash tourneys when I was uh-huh. younger. Um, I brought him to see my friend Joe. And if you're ever in like upstate New York, there's a place called Pastime Legends, and he he owns the oh, store. Cool. Okay. Uh, he he will he will wreck you. <laughs> so I brought I brought I brought I brought my friend there as a humbling experience. Yes, that's awesome. And, and I I was like, he's like, I'm done. That was too much. <laughs> I don't. He he did he did things to me. I don't even know how <laughs> to describe. Put him into retirement. <laughs> Honestly, that description just takes me back to uh, going to Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments as like a 11 year old, when everyone else there knows how to play the game, and you, you know, have like the you think you know how to play the game, but <laughs> then they're just gonna be like, oh, you can't actually the trap card the same turn you play it. Uh, so I'm just oh, you you lost, boom, game over. <laughs> That's what that brings me back to. Such a yeah. Do either of you guys play Magic: The Gathering? Negative. I I or, <laughs> I I've attempted I, to I, learn, I, I, but. <laughs> I've had that experience when I went to, uh, I don't know if Yu-Gi-Oh! has the same thing, but uh, we have this thing called Draft, which is where you get a bunch of booster packs. You, you pay a certain amount of money in, so you pay like 20, like 20, 30 bucks or something, and they give you a big potluck of cards. So you pull like one card, you pull, you move the whole pack down, and you get to pull whatever you want out of it, and you try to make a deck out of that card. Oh, cool, that, okay. Uh, That's really giant, interesting. Giant, jumble, giant yeah, jumbled okay. mess of nonsense. And then people already researched what's in the most modern oh. pack. And it's like, well, so if they're like, I know what I'm going to be building. And so you're like, oh, this card looks really cool. <laughs> cool. And you're like, and it's like, oh, I've got a bunch of stuff that don't work yeah, together. Like this card art, but, but. <laughs> but, and some people are like, well, I'm only here to plus. So people like sell cards and stuff. So like, I don't even care about winning. I just want to pull the good stuff because it's a potluck. Everyone gets the uh-huh. card. So you have a bunch of different personality well, types. Yeah. you got. So you have the ultra competitive, then you've got the the merchant type person, and then you have the kids and adults that are like, well, I think I made the right choice, but I think I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's it's yeah. hard because they're. 
I feel like those types of things, I mean, like COVID aside, those types of things are very niche and hard to find, at least where we're at. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. sure New York has it. It's a plenty of people doing various things. But like, I think as a whole, even like, if you were to look for an online community, um, things are a little bit more hard to break into. So I feel like if I were to try to go and join one of those, it'd be harder for me to find people than it would have been like the Game Facts era or something like that, where it's mm-hmm. for forum based as opposed to like YouTube and Twitch are the main things now. And you can go on Reddit, but you'll get deleted and all this and that. Why are you getting deleted? Uh, I yell at kids. Oh. Yeah, that's okay. my Reddit account. Well, that's good to know. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but I think just overall, as a whole, the online sphere has gotten to be less social. I don't know if you guys have an opinion on this, but, like, I mean, I my goal in video games online is to talk to people. And, and usually they just end up getting mad, but that's still <laughs> talking to them. And I think there are certain games that that's lost on yeah i think it definitely depends on the game because you know there's definitely um plenty of games where you could just talk to a random person and then you could just have like i don't know like one thing in common and uh-huh. then you just like party up and just chat about it for like two hours on end yeah so like i'd say that social aspect is still there but i feel like a lot of people don't really uh go online looking for it when it comes to like yeah. specific games like maybe uh like if they want to talk about something specific <laughs> they'll go to like i don't know a chat room or go into somebody's twitch chat and like chat Uh with all the viewers about it that kind of thing one thing i learned about like finding like people online is that if if there's a thing you like even if it's super niche there's going to be a reddit on it yeah and and it's kind of at that point it's it's a really weird experience like message someone nowadays apparently if it's not like publicly Uh uh-huh like like i'll met like just straight up dms like on twitter i don't really dm anyone. yeah like everything is a public conversation so like and i think that's kind of like how the meta is set up for social media <laughs> yeah like on, absolutely like um i don't know how you guys feel about the the black lives matter movement or whatnot and we don't have to get political at all if you don't want to but the thing is i tried messaging people like in these movements um and like asking their perspective and they won't really respond to you. They'll instead post publicly on Facebook that someone asks a question. And it's like, you can't keep it oh, private. Okay. See, that's kind of my thing. Because, like, mm-hmm. um, somebody, like, re- like when w- all this was initially going down with the riots and whatnot, like, I obviously have my opinion about it, which is, like, you know, I'm all for it. I think it's a great, like, movement. But I wasn't really saying anything about it because I'm just kind of, like, processing everything that's happening. And, like, you know, I don't necessarily want to just walk out here and be like, hey, you know, fight the fucking power, boys. And uh, someone's going to be like, like, I don't want to get in an argument with somebody. Like, I don't care. Like, I have my opinion. I don't see why just because I have an opinion, I need to put it out publicly, you know? Like, I feel like, you know, everybody obviously has their opinions. But for certain things, like, apparently if you don't make it public, like, you're part of the problem at the same time, which I just find really weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you're you can't just be a freaking hermit about yeah. things. So I, what what I asked was, like he was he was like an upstate New York like leader of, like uh, this movement. But I just wanted to ask, why does setting a random truck on fire like stop racism? And he's like, well, it's just it's just because. And it's like, what, what the fuck? And it's <laughs> like, and then he posts online. That you have to be basically with them, not against them. And I just, I don't, I just don't get that. Like, so I'm, I'm racist. Like, I'm for the idea, like the march on, like march on Washington, where everyone of color comes up and they had Martin Luther King's speech. Like, that is something I'm for. But like, you see on, you, you see like Korean shop owners or single like single mothers who have businesses and you break their stuff there's a there's a jewish farmer pharmacy that uh, got broken into and got into narcotics stolen uh-huh. like, i don't see how that solves i don't see how that solves anything but like in my hometown there was like the riots were able to out a a racist um uh, store owner so that that business is now gone and it's like because the guy said well i don't serve the n-word and eventually uh, it's 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 bumpies. It's in Schenectady. That business is no longer getting anybody uh-huh. to come there anymore. 
So, like, there's good stuff that comes out of it, and then there's bad stuff, but it's not like... I, f I find it to be very authoritarian. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to... You have to choose a side. If you don't choose our side, you're on the wrong side. So it's called Victor's Law. So whatever side uh -huh. wins... And I, I don't know when there's going to be a winner yeah. in this, because it just seems like... You can't battle an idea. It's like the war on terror. How do you battle terrorism? And Trump's response is, well, just bomb the <laughs> fuck him. out of him. Yep, great. And, it, <laughs> and like, you know, that's... I, I like to think that the journey is what mm -hmm. matters, but really, the world is an ends justify the means kind of place when it comes to stuff. like. So there's no, there's no real way to be a fence sitter, mm -hmm. because... because if you're a fence sitter, you're a pussy. But how do you use that <laughs> that phrase? That that that's that's politically incorrect. Uh -huh. You can't say that. And it's like you get into these little arguments that get so far off from the the point that you want to yeah, make. Yeah, and I think as a whole, so. like you touched on with regards to social media and with regards to like Reddit and other forum forums and stuff, it's like you said, it's not a private civil discourse, right? It's if you state an opinion that's like if you go to say a Trump subreddit and criticize him, then everyone's going to pile on you there. It's not. Or if you go to the Black Lives Matter one and criticize that, everyone's going to pile on you there, right? It's not yeah. something that can be... Politics is a struggle to be discussed civilly, and I think that, like, diversity of opinions is important to have. And um, to be able to respectfully debate and talk about things, it's not what social media and what forums are geared towards. Mm -hmm. and, then you ha and then you have the overriding bodies of, like, Twitter or Reddit or moderators who, you know, it, there's a fine line to draw with free speech. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with Twitter and whatnot, um, if you do have a opposing viewpoint or what, that as long as you're not seeming too radical, which, I mean, who's the judge of that? They can just silence mm -hmm. you. That's And that's like the worst part. Yeah. And I think it's, it's interesting. I think there's a lot to this topic, and I don't <laughs> claim to be smart enough to know anything is... about it, really. I just have my own opinions, and like Brandon said, like it's it's tough when your opinions are expected to be shared. Like I, I, yeah. I don't have that problem, which is nice. But... I just feel like the idea of morals in general is really interesting, because, you know, mm -hmm. everyone... Obviously, you can share the same exact morals with another person, but the majority of people have very different morals, literally depending on very different topics. So yeah. when it comes to just that as a whole, you know, we obviously cancel culture is like a very big topic right now because, it's, you know, it's been happening so much. And now people are kind of like, well, is this necessarily the right thing to do? Mm -hmm. But it's like, you know, I, where do we agree as a whole that like, hey, what this guy is doing is wrong and we should cancel him for it. It's really weird. Like we could get really, really deep into it. But I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, it's just kind of like we're just talking about weird philosophies. <laughs> not gonna matter no, that's how that's how like uh philosophy and whatnot evolves over time though like that's how psychology and mm -hmm. sociology and, and like systems of, of people come together is by having these discourses uh -huh. and then people who are way more educated and have gone to school <laughs> for like eight 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 mm -hmm. twelve years in psychology can finally write a paper that no one's ever yep. going to read <laughs> and say this is how we're supposed oh, to be oh you were speaking to me personally <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you went to school for it's uh it's sciences. in the psychology field, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went. I'm going to school for uh, for nursing. Oh, okay. I uh, so like when people talk about how do we stop anger or something, mm -hmm. like I, I learned this a couple day. I learned this a couple days ago on my online class. Like, is it better to bottle up your anger or is it better to vent it uh -huh. out? And apparently, b both options are terrible. I don't know if you went over that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah you, you can't you you, you can't win. Actually, the best way. Mm -hmm. And it's it sounds very cliche, but the best way to deal with anger is actually to use that anger, which is a form of power and fuel, and use it to become productive uh -huh. and help and help mm -hmm. people. Because when you help people, it diverts that feeling of anger into something that becomes happiness. And it's like really like that's like how society should mm -hmm. be: people helping yeah. each other out and not being yep. dicks. <laughs> but in, instead. We have people who use straw mans, like mm -hmm. the, like abor like the abortion argument. Like, um, I come from a, I, I'm in New York, so we're we're supposed to be super progressive, but I actually have a conservative, slightly conservative background on this one. Um, you know, so from my side, from conservatives, right? They'll say I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a Trump fan, okay? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even a Biden fan. 
I don't even. I don't like either. I one. think that's the general consensus for like yeah. the average person. <laughs> they, <laughs> everybody sucks. Yeah. I I didn't I didn't like the last election oh, either. It was awful. No, nothing. It was literally Mr. Garrison versus Hillary Clinton. So, um, oh fuck, fuck! I am so fucking screwed. Why did it have to be her? Anyway, oh, he's, my opponent is a liar, and he cannot be trusted. I am giving this to you. But yeah, people. I think. Have you played Persona pe- Five pe- yet? I forgot. I I did ask I've, you this, but I forgot your answer. Honestly. Yeah. I, I, wa- I watched little clips okay. of it, um, mm-hmm. but I ha- I haven't played it myself so, yet, yeah. though. I know uh-huh. I know that there's a scene that I read on TV Tropes, because I have to spoil myself. <laughs> Apparently, there's this one character, like, the first boss uh-huh. is a fucking... Yes. And I'm like, that is a topic that has never been covered in a video game before. At least, uh-huh. I don't think so. And I'm like, that's, that's fucking... Because I read the description... He uses like social media to blackmail this chick into suicide, and like that's mm, it's, fucked. Yeah, up. and so the, like um, taking that more broadly, the the theme of Persona Five, and there's lots of memes regarding this, is like changing the hearts of corrupted people. And I think like when that came out, which was I believe 2015 or 2016, something somewhere in there, and it was localized, but it. <laughs> It just really is is almost timeless the the subject matter. And I think that's why I like Persona so much because it's not like Persona Four has a specific timeline for its themes either. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Four is about fighting the demons inside you and accepting them. And uh-huh. that, that's that's I'm writing this I'm writing a script right now about um, Persona Four, and really it's about accepting that you might have some nasty parts of yourself. Uh-huh. So like with this whole race war that we have right now like martin luther king said it best like people say oh how do you have government or how do you have meaningful change to fight against racism and he literally says it in his speech he says while i cannot change the the heart of like the heart of racist man or whatever Mm -hmm. i can at the very least have laws put into place to prevent him from lynching me yeah (laughs) so like if if you are racist or whatever like just own up to it but just don't do anything about it and like that's I don't like racism. I think it's it's stupid. I I I was okay. I'm I'm Filipino, but because I'm half Filipino, so I have brown skin, and I've got my my father is white, so I I have like a big nose or whatever. Okay. Uh, I was called the Arab kid. I was called the terrorist kid uh, growing up. So I I know what racism feels like. It's a shitty feeling. Uh-huh. But those people that you know used to make fun of me or whatever, they they actually turned out to be productive members of society. So. What we have now going on with the Black Lives Matter thing is people doxing each other. And I, I, I made a tweet about that, and it's like, I don't agree that this girl, this 16-year-old girl who um, did blackface, and, and she could mean it, she could be 100% racist, or she could not be, who knows. Her her future's over before it began. Mm-hmm. But the general consensus is, well, she's racist, so fuck them. Like, that's the thing, back with cancel so, culture. It's like... Uh... A lot of people think, like, oh, this person did this bad thing, so we just need to cancel them, you know? Like, the problem is, with cancel culture, is they don't leave room for redemption. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, Uh especially when it comes to anime, which we'll transition to in a second, um, (laughs) I feel like, uh, you know, in a lot of anime, like, some of the the better, like, character development things is when it comes to a character finding redemption. At least for me, personally, it's one of those, you know, story aspects that I really enjoy. But when it comes to cancel culture, it's like... You know, oh, you did this awful thing, you need to be canceled for it. And, like, that's where it comes back to what I was talking to with morals, because it's like, well, what is too far to the point where, like, you literally cannot be redeemed? Because, like, the problem with... Cannibalism. (laughs) Cannibalism. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, like, the problem with, uh, you know, with cancel culture is they're like, okay, well, we're going to cancel you. And sometimes, you know, people are like, all right, I've learned from this, I'm evolved, yada, yada, yada. You know, they can find Mm -hmm. that redemption, but, like, where is the line? You know, that's the biggest problem I have. And I think specifically, like, look at the most, one of the most recent ones, which is um, Jenna Marbles. I think that one's really interesting to me. Because she, oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys watched her video about being canceled, quote unquote. Yeah, I did. Um, I didn't even realize, you know, all that stuff existed, but. No, me neither. And she, like, talks about how she's private it, privated it, and, like, um, how she's sort of changed and doesn't want to offend people. And, and it really was, like, That was a really interesting video. I know someone, I saw a tweet somewhere that was like, it seems like she's being held hostage by her viewers 
Um, mm-hmm. And I thought that was interesting because I don't think, just from watching that video and hearing her, that she intends to offend anyone or wants to, but back in the day on YouTube, like those were the videos that got popular were offensive jokes and sexist jokes, racist jokes, whatever. That's what got views. That's what people, they wanted that shock humor back then. Yeah, I mean, like, just look at Shane Dawson's whole rise to fame. Uh Uh-huh. I mean, like, I'm definitely guilty of watching a lot of his videos back in the day, and um, I definitely remember there was a cutoff point for me, because I do remember when he started, like, uh, um, doing that, I forget what the character's name was, but there was, like, he had, like, a black character persona, right? And, Uh like, that's when I stopped watching him, was around that time, but before that, it was still, like, a lot of really shock humor, like, a lot of, like, obviously, you can go through everything that uh, people are calling him out for now and there was a lot of that back then for sure but like back in that landscape you know uh, a lot of people including myself you just think it's funny but at the end of the day when you like grow up you realize wow that was like really fucked up like Uh why did anybody think that was funny yeah and if you think back to like middle school or early high school like lunchroom chats oh my god (laughs) xbox 360 parties and stuff like that the language used back then would no way be allowed at a school now, or, like, there's no way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rape, gay, all these fucking, like, mm-hmm. things. I, I, play, I, play, I played Halo 3 uh-huh. religiously, and that's, like... Yeah. And- <laughs> and that, that's just... that's just And you can also, like, see that, and I, I keep bringing back Persona 4, but, like, Yosuke Hanamura, like, that character was made in, like, 2007 uh-huh. or something, and he's a complete homophobe in yep. the game. And so, because it's released... Now in 2020, people are bringing up the old argument of, you know, I hate Yosuke. He's a homophobe, but like that's how 16-year-olds at that age talk. And is it socially acceptable? Absolutely mm-hmm. not. But that's just how people are, mm-hmm. and it's sh- it's shitty. But you can only hope that they grow into better adults. But like we talked about social media, um, if someone wants to, they can completely like destroy your life through doxing or yeah, like. I would never want to be doxxed. Oh, for sure. That would be uh-huh. like, like, if we like, want to talk about, like, like a, a very controversial YouTuber, Mr. Killer Keemstar, I'd say, like, you know, a lot of things <laughs> that, like, I'd say he's one of those um, people that, like, at, almost everyone can probably have a love-hate relationship with Keemstar. Like, even me, myself, I feel like, you know, there's some things he does where I'm like, okay, you know, maybe he's not a bad guy. But I feel like the one thing where I'm like, all right, I don't know if I can ever give you a pass on this, Keemstar, it's, like, the fact that he just doxes people. Or has doxxed people in the past because like when a lot of mm-hmm. uh you know his controversies come up controversies come up it's like okay i can see how you've probably hopefully learned from this but like when it comes to just you know oh this guy sucks let me just throw out his address real quick oh here's his wife's phone number oh this is where they work it's like bro that's fucked up I, like i don't care who you are and then when wings of redemption doxed him he's like you want to explain <laughs> to me why you're giving away my personal information it's like, it's like what goes and, around comes around bro it's, but like oh. why would you like i feel like that's a line that you know you you shouldn't cross when it comes to this landscape like wings obviously you know if, if like somebody's in danger and like giving out this person's information can save like themselves or some other person like go ahead but when it comes to just like oh let's just fuck with this guy it's really uh, awful like, um, a fellow YouTube friend of mine, um, Nuxtaku, recently got doxxed, like, on stream, like, or, or swatted, sorry, not, not, uh, uh-huh. not even doxxed, swatted. Oh, that's, that's Yeah, perfect. like, that's awful. Like, everything ended up okay, and he's 100% fine, but it's, like, just the fact that, you know, okay. so many people out there are willing to do something, like, possibly deadly like that is crazy. Yeah. And like, it, you don't it, even know what they're telling the police when they call them up. Like, yep. Like, imagine, like, the, uh, the amount of, like, uh, oh, like, this person's got three people hostage in his house right now. Like, they're obviously going to take that very seriously. So, that you could get killed for that. And it, it definitely comes across mm-hmm. because of the screen, too, is different. Because it's not, like, and they, they talk about this in school, cyberbullying and whatnot. But, like, see, talking to someone and seeing someone through a screen is a lot different than... Like, in real life, I know Brandon. So if I were to fake call the police on him, that's, like, not that I would ever do that. Or mm-hmm. anyone would... Yeah, yeah, get ready. But, oh, um, uh. but like, you would... I don't think anyone would ever do that purposely on someone they know well. Yeah, right? uh, unless they just really hate that person. I mean, yeah. that's also... That's always a possibility, you know. Or they're just an immature piece of crap. Mm-hmm. There's this, um... There's this one, like, uh... This is one YouTuber that Mr. Medicare was uh-huh. covering, and something Chung. I, I think he's like oh Vietnamese Ian Miles or Chung. And he, <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, he 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 
doxed someone and the the police came, the SWAT came, and they flashbanged yep. his house, and one of the flashbangs let landed near this dude's mm-hmm. dog and fucking blew his head open. Yep. That's awful. That's are you gonna are, are are you gonna are you gonna pay for another dog? Are you gonna do are you gonna pay my psychiatrist because you fucking ruined my life or something? Like how do you do that to it's, someone? Yeah. It's it's Absolutely. horrific. That's one of the worst things you could ever do, I think, is cause an animal to 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 die. Like that's that's so mind boggling to me. That it, you can yeah. live with yourself after that. It it always makes me happy when like um there's news of like somebody who doxed and or swatted somebody else like getting mm-hmm. uh punished for it because yeah. it's like you need to make an example of these people yep. otherwise it's going to keep happening and like then it's just going to become a big joke oh like oh you're not going to get caught like you know yeah uh, like why you know if somebody really wants to uh fuck with somebody like why wouldn't they do it at that point like if there's no consequences well i i guess uh moving on before we play some really sick games here so okay. i are you are a one piece fan is that correct wyatt Yes, and I, uh, I do like Luffy. Oh, okay. Out of, uh, <laughs> Luffy is great. my main, 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 but I like Zoro oh, a little facts. bit more. Oh man, but, um, correct. But would you okay. say that you're a anime only watcher, or are you reading the manga as well? I, I've been letting it sit for a little bit. The Wano arc happened, and I just I wanted to let it sit, so I'm up to Cake. Uh, whole Cake Island. Okay. See, I was actually going to ask what yeah. you were thinking of Wano so far. I saw the animation, and it looks it looks yeah. bitchin'. I kind of have a general idea. I know that Luffy got curb stomped by Kaido, and that's kind of where I'm Bad. where I'm at. Uh-huh. I'm like, I want I want I want to let this sit. That's not a bad idea because I feel no, like um, not with this one. <laughs> like one of the big problems with like the manga in particular that a lot of people are having is that like you know you have to wait sometimes like two weeks in between a chapter, and it's like the pacing feels like really off. Like you feel like things are gonna supposed to be heating up by now, but I bet if you were to go back watch from the beginning even just up till now it would feel like a lot more complete and uh mm-hmm. you know it wouldn't be dragged out and everything but because i know I, a lot of your older oh, sorry go ahead if you want i'm I just gonna say i think especially lately there's been a lot of two week um hiatuses. yeah it's been rough but because i know like with a lot of your videos for instance you've talked about like the the issues with the anime translating it from the manga and i feel like one of yeah. the better things with getting like a new director and uh, changing up the animation and all that jazz now, do you feel, like, with what you have seen of Wano, do you feel like uh, that's been, like, a good change for the anime? From, like, the little clips I've seen, yeah, it, it looks spectacular. It's, I used, do you know Richard Williams, the guy behind uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? I've seen that movie, but I can't say I know, like, a lot about the behind-the-scenes yeah. stuff. Yeah, um, he's the animator that I, I follow, along with um, the director, Hayao Miyazaki, and what, what their conversation was about... Uh, like what quality animation mm-hmm. is uh-huh. for the past twenty years or thirty years, we we see the new kids and, and we want to have everything be high speed and whatnot, and we've been focusing this entire time on slowing things down. And they were really in reference to having the frames look better. Yeah. So if you pa- if you pause a frame <laughs> in any Miyazaki film, it's perfect. It's meticulous. It's, it's uh-huh. right. there's a thing in like cartoon animation called like squash and stretch. So, like, when people pause in a Disney movie, they're like, that one frame looks really yep. fucking weird, and that's stupid. That, By definition, that's bad animation. No, that's a technique. But, like, with, like, One Piece, and I, I'll give a more of an example of, like, Dragon Ball Super, when you can actually see too much of the squash and stretch, it looks visually unappealing. When I pause One Piece now, every frame looks really fucking crisp. Mm-hmm. Like, it looks really good now in Wano. Like, the original One Piece, like, the uh-huh. earliest animation... That was done like like um, on cells. Mm-hmm. That looks fucking yeah, amazing. Yeah, I like that a lot. But now that it looks, now that it's all digital, like they have to, in some of the proportions, like the way they they shape Luffy's head and whatnot, everything looks a little bit crisper, but a little bit different. So like you can take the earliest episode of One Piece, and then you can take the latest episode, and you're like, that looks different, but it looks crisp and awesome. Because like, Cause, like I know, uh, like from my own experience, like one of the issues with One Piece as a whole is that like the pacing in some of the later arcs is just abysmal like you could say that's always been there <laughs> because like obviously you know they have to make sure that the anime doesn't catch up to the manga you know like a lot of times you know oh well, let's just throw in some filler but with yeah. like dress rosa in particular like that's one of my favorite arcs especially like for post time skip but god damn does the anime drag that out so badly so badly like there's beam strikes oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah. Oh, who doesn't but, like, love a good beam struggle? Well, like, the beam struggles aren't even the thing that necessarily bother me. It's, like, all the just filler in between. It's, like, you know, something happens, and, like, I get that it's a very anime trope to, like, show 
everyone's reaction, even if they don't necessarily do that in the manga. But it's like, I swear to God, every little, every single little tidbit of information or just like any action that happens throughout Just Rosa is just like, oh, who's all in this area? Let's just show their face right now. And it's like, <laughs> then there's a whole episode of them just running around town, which happens yep. in like half a chapter in the manga. It's just stuff like that that really is like, okay, I can see why some people would be turned off from the One Piece anime, but obviously, you know, they have to be pretty invested to get to Dress Rosa, so it's not the most necessary criticism. But I'm definitely glad that they're shaping it up, and, well, without spoiling anything, uh, the last couple chapters of Wano have been really heating things up, so... Yep, they've been interesting. I think you're going to like it. Okay. And uh, the only uh, other question I had for you in regards to One Piece, so I saw that you made a video going over the, the top 10 best Devil Fruits in One Piece. So, I myself have actually done that. So, <laughs> I, uh, with, uh, so spoiler alert, in case you want to watch uh, Noble's video first, because I'm going to spoil your number one pick. So, your number one pick was the Yami Yami no Mi. Do you still feel that way, in terms of, like, the best overall devil fruit to this day? I don't think it, like, from where I stopped, that's where I, uh, I came up with that conclusion. Because it, literally, it, if we're talking, like, without hockey... I think the Yami Yami no Mi is the best because it just negates other devil fruits. Mm -hmm. So if you have this... Because I, I want to make a video about how hockey completely like oh. messes up One Piece. Cause it, becomes, <laughs> it becomes very... It becomes very like... Uh, RPG e uh -huh. like oh I've got level f I've got level one hockey well fuck you I've got level yep. two hockey <laughs> and like I've got this super special arm I've got the super special conquerors hockey it's it sucks. But I think I gave an honorable mention to Brooke and his uh, literal immortality. Like, if you wanted to just live fucking forever, then his devil fruit would be the mm -hmm. best. But Yami Yami, literally, it either allows him to absorb the devil fruit, or he just had, like, an apple in his pocket and just ate under the cape of, like, Whitebeard <laughs> when he died. I don't understand what yeah. happened. Like, the way they frame it, and with how tall Whitebeard is, it's like, did he just even <laughs> fall? I don't even know. Like it's really hard to say, because, like, we obviously... Because, you know, they've said before, like, oh, if you eat two double fruits, you'll literally just fall apart. You'll die. So it's like, well, how is yeah. he able to do that, then? Is it part of... Is it because of the Yami Yami no Mi? Or is it because, uh, you know, there's all these other theories about, like, oh, well, Blackbeard is actually two people, or he's more than... He's more than two people, even. He's two people in a trench coat. <laughs> well, because well, like, <laughs> <laughs> or 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 it could be a reference to like some kind of Japanese thing where like because black because Whitebeard did have a hole in his chest, and I've been thinking about this. Like, there's like this idea of like uh, multiple hearts or mm -hmm. whatever. So he could he could have eaten his heart or something, and that overrides it or yeah, whatever. It... But yeah, I think I think it's 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 black hole the power, and I think it's. It's got a lot of extra innate things to it. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of okay on my pick. How about you? All right. I, I think, I like, it. honestly, it depends on when we get the answers. Because, like, if we got the answer of, like, oh, yeah, the Yami Yami no Mi is the reason why you can just take other Devil Fruits and use them effectively, I'd be like, oh, obviously, like, there's no question. That's number one. It's kind of like how in uh, My Hero Academia, I don't know if you've watched it. I don't, I don't think you have. But one of the characters, like, they're power you could say is that they can just like take other powers just and now they're theirs so it's like why wouldn't mm -hmm. that be like top tier you know but i guess uh any other uh questions evan that you'd like to ask yeah, before got, we move on i've to got two games? more and then we'll oh, get we'll upset get with games epic so, game time. <laughs> so i guess i'll stick on anime right now so you gave us a list of various anime you've watched and there's one on there in particular that i didn't expect to see which was wolf's reign did you watch yeah. that as, like, growing up, or how did you hear of that? Because I never heard of it until, like, last year, and then I watched it, and I really liked it. Yeah, Wolf's Rain used to be on um, that weird Toonami block, or Adult Swim, uh -huh. I think. Yeah, it was, on a, it was on Adult Swim at, like, midnight, and I really dug it, and I rewatched. watched uh, uh, I'm actually in the process of rewatching it, so I got past the first couple episodes, and I just like the motif, because, uh -huh. like, the way, th the way they, um, they frame it, First of all, the the animation, like every still, is, it is looks beautiful. great. Mm -hmm. But but uh, the idea that these guys can seamlessly transform to wolves is it actually like it's like Pan's Labyrinth a little mm. bit. Like, is this actually happen? Is it uh -huh. actually happening? Is are they actually wolves? Are they not? And it's ambiguous, and that's kind of like yeah. the whole motif. Yeah, of the show. and not to spoil anything for Brandon who hasn't seen it, but like especially, right. I really liked the ending. I thought the ending was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna. No, I'm not gonna it's just. 
interesting. And I feel like there's definitely some people out there who may not like that ending, but I really enjoyed it. And then uh, finally, I wanted to go back to games because like you said, you've done reviews of Duke Nukem recently and then Bomberman, um, some of the Berserk games. And I saw a tweet recently, we talked briefly of some game collections. So like, how do you get these games? Not how do you get these games for your collection, but like, how do you come up with the games you want to go purchase? Or do you just stumble upon and be like, this is kind of interesting. I guess I'll buy it. Because it seems very out, uh, of, I, out of left field, a lot of these games. I got into game collecting when I was a kid. My, my dad likes Game Boys uh-huh. and stuff. And so he taught me kind of like some ways to collect games. So obviously there's there's eBay. Mm-hmm. And, and so I, I use eBay, Mercari, and GameStop, and flea markets. And if it's... If I don't have it and I, I have a pretty good memory, I'm like, oh, I'll just add that to my collection. Mm-hmm. If you go on eBay, um, this is like my secret weapon to get a lot of games. Type in whatever console you like and just say lot. Mm-hmm. So say Xbox 360 oh, lot okay. and there's just going to be... And the same thing on Mercari, which is a app that you can do and you can negotiate. So I got like a crap ton of PS4 games. So I got like that Kingdom Hearts, the story thus uh-huh. far, and Kingdom Hearts 3, the collector's edition, both for like 25 bucks. Jeez. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a merchant or something. <laughs> like I, I, I like to get the best deal mm-hmm. on yeah. things. I think I, I think I have like over like a thousand Jeez. games. And the, I, I have a huge collection to go through. Mm-hmm. And so some weird games I, I want to review is I never, I don't know if you know this game. It's called Chulip. No. It's a, it's a PS2 classic. It was made by I think NIS America or Natsumi, the guys behind like. Uh, I think I think Natsumi is the one behind Harvest Moon, okay. and it's got that that vibe. Uh-huh. You play you play you play as a, a high schooler, and it's very chibi like. So you, every character has big heads, and it's really steeped in Japanese culture. It's C H U L I P, true okay. lip, and it's I I think it translates to to kiss lip or something or your lip, and your journey is to kiss a bunch of random what? characters <laughs> that are based that are based on Japanese like jokes or whatnot. So <laughs> what? there's like a, a there it's it's really weird oh, and you man. have to like do thing this is like i want this to have like a remaster but because it's a game that <laughs> nobody has ever played in the history yeah. of ever <laughs> i have to own this yeah please it's awesome that, that's why i have persona 4 golden on vita because no one bought the vita uh-huh. and this game is too good to pass up so when it randomly came up like last month that it was released on steam like that there is god <laughs> yep. so <laughs> Chulip, to give an idea, there's a doctor who goes around at midnight, and this game does have an internal clock. Okay. Um, so like ever, ever, it's like Pikmin, so you have uh-huh. to micromanage it a little bit. So when you when you leave your house and it's like nighttime, the doctor is a completely kind fellow. He talks to this woman outside of his uh, his um, hospital that has the shape of a head of like a muffin. It, it, it doesn't. Make sense <laughs> so, and then at around midnight, he'll leave his hospital. And he'll turn into a vampire with a giant syringe, and you're like, "That's oh, fucked." Okay. And you can get one shot and kill. And you gotta smooch. You him. go into, you gotta smooch, and you gotta find a way to do it. And <laughs> God dang, there's, there's, there's when you go down the street, there's a uh, a boxer, a zombie boxer with headgear yes! and stuff, and he'll be punching. <laughs> and he'll, if you, you have to look through hints in the game to see what you have to do. Um, so it says. Jab, jab, cross, jab, jab, cross, rest. So you have to wait till he does his jab, jab, cross twice, and then sneak up on him and kiss him. And it's like it's really weird. Like I, if you just Google it now, you're like, this game looks like a classic, but it's like an obscure game that no one is ever going to play because it's trapped on the PS2. Just like Digital Devil Saga, like Shin Megami Tensei, Digital Devil Saga uh-huh. One and Two, and, and Nocturne. Oh, you can download them on the PS3. PSN store. Why are they different? Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. How is why? Look at Dante in one so, of them. So, Tales Tales of Symphonia, the number one game on GameCube, no HD re-release. Oh, really? After PS3. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think it might be. I was gonna say I, I saw know, a lot of the Tales games in the Steam Summer Sale, but I don't. I can't guarantee I saw that one. But Tales of Symphonia is like my one of my favorite games, and I was like so stoked it was yeah. on the PS3. But yeah, let me see. Oh, Tales of Symphonia okay. is on Steam. Well, at least they're... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brandon, you have played Duke Nukem Forever, right? I have played about half the game. <laughs> How much did you enjoy it? Uh, on a scale of 1 to 46? Well, I guess uh, on the topic of Duke Nukem. So, 
uh, Wyatt here has made an entire video on it, which you should definitely check out. Absolutely. But Very funny it, video. <laughs> it, it brought me back to some like weird nostalgia, right? Because um, just uh, as a little background, my younger sibling, he had this tendency to get really obsessed with like one property for a, like a short period of time, and then he would move on and obsess over something else, right? So he did that a lot with music in particular, but at one point, he got very obsessed with Duke Nukem for some reason. And this was like right before Duke Nukem Forever came out, so I remember he had like a poster of Duke Nukem Forever in his room and everything. He was super obsessed with it, and I do, I do remember he beat the game. But I was like, alright, well, if he likes this so much, maybe I should give it a shot. And I just remember like, I did not know what the hell to do. Kind of like you've been talking <laughs> about, it's like, you know, where do you go? Like, oh, you have to do this really monotonous task to get, move on to this puzzle area? Like... I just gave Why? up. <laughs> I don't remember where exactly in the game that I stopped, but I remember the beginning. I remember the strip club. I think it was shortly after the strip club where it's like I just gave up cuz it sucked. They they made a strip club unfun. Yeah. <laughs> I, it was, you have you the game's rated like M uh -huh. or whatever. But like you don't even get anything out of it. <laughs> yeah. Because they were they they you you get like the girl's dildo, some popcorn, Great. and a condom. <laughs> And and you're like, oh, let me go in the back room in the strip club, and it, it's just like in real life. That's the joke, you know. She she shows her titties to you, and then you just fade to black. Great, cool. awesome. Yeah. Wasted my time. I'm not pretty good. sure Vice City probably had a better fucking strip club than, than that. Probably, yeah. I just remember in the video, you're like, why can you pee in a urinal? <laughs> like, why can you well, flush every urinal? Like, I would say that'd be, like, one thing that's kind of interesting is that you can just do all this really stupid stuff for no reason. Like, I remember, I think it was in the strip club. Like, you could play a bunch of games for whatever reason. And I just remember, like, you know, why are these here? Like, oh, it's it's like it's cool. You can interact with them, sure. Like, you, you know, you want to play some freaking air hockey? Like, go for it. But why? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just a weird memory spent, I have. Yeah, if they spent more time like making the core game better, it would have been like so much. Like it could have been at least a passable mm -hmm. game. The best bar in a video game is still. I don't know if you guys have played it, but it got re-released on Switch. Uh, is Catherine? Oh, oh, I, I remember. I watched that. someone play Catherine. I never played it myself, but. I've also watched somebody <laughs> yes. play it. I can't say that I have myself, but I I, wa I do remember like I was interested in that uh, concept when it first came out. I uh -huh. remember trailers and everything back in the day. I love everything about Catherine except the actual game Catherine. It's <laughs> the story. The story is is so cool and like it's actually mature. So like most most Atlas games are revolved around oh you're uh -huh. a high schooler, but this one you're 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 a dude in your mid twenties. You're in a committed relationship, your girlfriend's pregnant, and you just woke up next to this really hot blonde chick that you had sex with, and you're like, crap, what what, what did I do? What's happening uh -huh. right now? And now a bunch of deaths are happening, because if you're a cheater, and you fall asleep, and you don't pass the puzzle in your mind, you are you lose all the fluids in your body somehow, like you shrivel up. <laughs> so, like, the bar they have in there is the coolest thing mm -hmm. ever. They got, like, an arcade machine, they've got all, they've got all the atlas like greatest hit songs oh cool so they'll have and it's a and i've always wanted to open up one of these um these restaurants myself it's a sushi conveyor belt mm -hmm. restaurant i don't know if you guys i've never been. been to one but i've heard of those i've seen them in anime and stuff so <laughs> the sushi conveyor belt restaurant is like the coolest fucking thing i went to hong mm -hmm. kong uh with my fiance um a couple years ago and we just went there a bunch, and it's really cool. You get to like order sushi off like an iPad. It comes on the express lane and the bottom lane. You just pick off what you want, and each plate is uh, corresponding to its own like uh, cost. So like a green plate's two dollars. Oh, whatever. that's so cool. Um, yeah. By the way, uh, USD, you know, American dollars goes seven times farther in uh, in Hong Jesus. Kong. Jesus. <laughs> but yeah. But it's not like my home country, the Philippines. Your dollar goes fifty times farther. It's it's the beauty of going to second or third <laughs> nations. It's fucking awesome. But yeah, Catherine has that bar, and it feels so like jazzy and, mm -hmm. and like romantic, and I like that aesthetic of it. Mm -hmm. But the actual gameplay of of um, Catherine is just like it's a fucking it's Cuber, and I'm like, why? <laughs> yeah, I've seen, and then you're also a sheep. I don't yeah. know if that's ever explained, but yeah. <laughs> you're, you have sheep ears and stuff. It's it's meant to be a thing about falling to sleep and oh, sheep okay. and, also be, uh, and, uh, and also being sheeple. Oh. You know, like, <laughs> Yikes. So when you have, so when you conquer, the idea is that once you conquer one of the puzzles, 
you go into this confession booth mm-hmm. and you're like, um, what's more important in your life uh, when it comes to women? Their looks or their personality? And then you get to pull a lever to choose which one and the game doesn't judge you until the cutscene ends and it'll say, percentage of players chose this and then you get to see how the majority of people felt about each decision. Oh. So a lot of people a lot of people chose personality um, just to probably look good. Yeah. But yeah, but your choices there also affect the ending. So you can either end up with your base. There's three Catherines. Mm-hmm. Cat Catherine with a K, C, yep. and Q. <laughs> I didn't know that was possible. Okay. How do you, how do you spell Catherine with a Q? Well, it can make the qua sound. Nope. It doesn't work. <laughs> Quathrin. Quathrin. <laughs> Quathrin. <Would be>, man, <laughs> that doesn't just have the same ring to it. Now I know what to name my future child. Well, okay. I you don't need to, but. I don't, but you know how funny that would be? Oh, how, is that with a K or a C? It was with a Q. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Damn it. Well, great is one word you could use for it. Anyways, can you go on to anything else, please, Brandon? Okay. Instead well, of your I future have, children? Uh, I have one <laughs> final question before we move on to some epic gamer time, okay? So great. My final question involves uh, your movie reviews. So, in my free time, I tend to watch a lot of different, like, movie review channels or just, you know, channels that talk about film in general. So, when it came to uh, looking over um, what films you've reviewed, I've noticed that there's, like, a a couple where you're like, hey, I really like this movie, so I'm going to talk about it. But then there's a lot more where you're like, this movie is, like, the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Such as the Fred movie and the Smosh movie, to name just (laughs) two examples. I wanted to watch, like, good movies... And I also want to, like, do a palate cleanser. I don't know if you ever go through this, but, like, I just know going in that a lot of YouTuber movies are going to just be a steaming pile of like, dog awful. shit. Like, awful. Yeah. Awful. And I had to be like, it can't be that bad. <laughs> and then I watched the, I watched the Fred <laughs> movie, and, like, e- even if, like, even if you were to, like, mute it and just do subtitles only, the plot of it is just... Yeah. It's just really <laughs> I, I don't like using that word, but it is. It's just yeah, it's awful. <laughs> it doesn't... And there's no, like, deeper meaning to it. There's there's no, like... It, and the creepy thing is, it has production value. It's got oh, good great. cameras. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's, it's shooting at 60 frames per second, so everything looks overly crisp that it doesn't need mm-hmm. to be. But, like, I'm going to go over to this girl's house, and I'm going to go... She's Judy, and I don't even care about Fred, and I hate that he was, like, the mascot of YouTube for the longest fucking time Ugh. in history. When you thought YouTube, you thought either one of two things cat videos which is not really what the site is used for no nope. at all like <laughs> nope. they, pe- people still think this site's about cat videos it's really mm-hmm. not it's about dumb shit yep. anyway <laughs> and then you had and then you had fred and <laughs> this guy proof that you don't need talent <laughs> to be successful, it just you can make funny oh. n- n- voices <laughs> so there was this uh kid on my street that i didn't really like very much but oh, i hung shocker. out with him sometimes <laughs> so there was one time he wore a fred shirt and i've never unironically wanted to bully slash inflict harm on someone. <laughs> <laughs> in that moment i i even asked him like really you're wearing a fred shirt why and he's like oh i think he's funny i'm like ah, ah. <laughs> like it's no it's no question why i didn't get along with this person but <laughs> i despised fred that's all I'm going to say. So, yeah, Me too. I, I hated that he got a movie. I guess my main, like, uh, wraparound question with that was, like, you know, how do you decide, like, oh, I want to watch slash talk about a good movie slash, like, bottom of the barrel should not exist movies? Palette cleansers. Oh, okay. Uh, so, sometimes I'll, I'll watch, like, really, really good stuff. Like, I, w- I watched Rocky, mm-hmm. and I was like, this is a masterpiece film. This is, this is what movies should strive mm-hmm. to be. Then I'll watch... Kick ass! I'm like, well, you know, I, 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 I prepared for oh. this. Uh, this is gonna, this is going to be a shit Kick-ass, show. Kick ass! Yeah, great. Uh, so like, that's how I felt about playing Persona recently. I played Duke Nukem and Bomberman. Like, I need uh-huh. a good game. Like, this is, this is, this is terrible. <laughs> I need to fucking cleanse uh-huh. myself. And now I actually want to play a bad game. And I'm looking around, and I'm oh, man. like, I've never played, I've never played Fractured on the fucking xbox 360 or this spongebob game that looks like dog Ooh. shit it's like spongebob movie is it the battle of bikini God. bottom i really hope so oh battle battle of bikini bot battle for bikini bottom is actually a exactly. really good game <laughs> <laughs> but no no it's spongebob hero oh Pants. cool well, oh so we what a name i so, actually uh, it, <laughs> saw a video pop up and i recommended about that one recently really yeah i don't, I don't want to know what you're searching but it, okay the hero pants. Oh, oh, okay. 
well, so I guess the the what this question all wraps around to. So in your review of the Fred movie, I saw you make this particular comment. You said, you know, I can't think of a single YouTuber who could make a good film. <laughs> that I, I might be paraphrasing the exact words, but that's ne- <laughs> basically what you said. So I wanted to ask you, you know, obviously it's been a little while now. You know, some new YouTubers you're probably checking out. Are there any YouTubers now that you think could probably make a good movie, or do you still have that belief? If you don't have a real background in film or have a real story to tell, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, I, I've heard the Cinema Snob movie is, like, passable. I've heard people say Markiplier would make a good movie because Markiplier is super charismatic mm-hmm. and yeah. stuff. But, like, I don't know. Like, unless it's a documentary, which is cheating. Yeah, it's not <laughs> what? Oh, cool, guys. You stole my point. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally cheating. All right. <laughs> um, but, like, I, I don't... I don't know if someone can really make a really good movie, like if it, about them as a character. Oh, like if okay, it's them, I see what you're saying. if it's if it's if it's them, like I don't care. Like this is kind of like the parameter. Like if it's them playing a character, like say it's James Rolfe or who, what have uh-huh. you. If he's a char- if he's a character playing a character or playing himself or whatever, um, that's what I'm talking okay. about. But if it's like if it's him with the camera. And he could play a minor role. Like none of none of these people are Quentin Tarantino. They can't put themselves in their own thing and, and actually you're right, play a role. You're right. That makes sense. Now I see yeah. what kind of context you were going for. Because I was more thinking of I know one example, I forget the director's name offhand, but he made that short um called Lights Out. I don't know if you've seen it, but it basically like, you know, it maybe you've seen it. I'll I'll just ex- describe it, but basically like this lady's like turning off a light and in the background you can see like the silhouette of somebody, like in the shadows. And every time she turns on the light you know, there's nobody there. Turns back off, there it is, eventually disappears, and there's a thing at the end. Well, that, like, uh, little skit on YouTube got so big that he was able to, like, actually uh, make a feature film out of it. And then there's also Bo Burnham, for instance, who uh, oh, moved yeah. on from YouTube stuff to make, what is it, sixth grade? Is that what it's called? Eighth grade. Eighth grade. Eighth grade. He's not in it, though. Yeah, but, he, like, he still was, like, you know, directing it. That's why I was yeah. trying to say, like, you know, I think yeah. YouTubers have the potential to, like, make a good movie. But when you put it in that sense of like, oh, the character that they are on YouTube in like a actual, you know, in an actual film, I can see how you could say that won't translate because I think uh, you might <laughs> actually be right <laughs> now that I think about now, it. Now, have you ever seen Dark Side Phil's Project 7? Because that's a masterpiece. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm glad I haven't. <laughs> I'll link, I'll link you guys it. Don't uh, worry. Please don't. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, if we're all uh, finished with good old... Happy question time. I think it's time to become Epic Gamers. What do you buy, What do you boys say? Oh, I'm ready. I'm right. ready to well, compete and collaborate. All right, Wyatt. Well, so the first game we're going to be playing here is the hit art activity on this, uh, this podcast here. So basically, I'm going to be putting some very crude, masterfully drawn art onto the stream. And uh, you and Evan here are going to work together to figure out which character and which anime they're from. And uh, so you'll get, you know, uh, one point. For the anime and one point for the character's name if you can get both All those right. right you know okay. you, you get some points together the goal is to just you know flex on every other guest slash when we participated ourselves to like get the most points it's easy don't it's worry very right. straightforward so basically you guys both work together to get one answer so you will give me a final answer after you discuss when it comes on screen uh uh-huh. any questions so you're going to post it now and then you're going to mute yourself and then we talk or no like that... you guys will just say oh this we... is our final answer so yeah basically like i i can listen to you but i'm not going to give you any hints until you say like oh yeah this is my final answer this is the anime this is the character boom that's if anything he'll he'll try to trick us yeah so like you you could be like talking with each other like oh i think it's this but um then like i'll be like oh that is correct but you know i'm not going to say that but then you'll be like (laughs) (laughs) then you'll be like well actually i think it's this and i'll be like so what's the final answer and then you'll give me the wrong one and i'll just (laughs) i'll laugh at you that's, so. tr- that's yeah that's the punishment is we get laughed at by brandon and <laughs> other people yeah it, it'll you'll for, you'll never live it down basically so <laughs> uh i will when you guys are ready i will put the first one up on stream obviously you know it'll probably be like a two second or so delay so all right are you ready wyatt yeah, all right let's, let's do this all right so the first one i think is a dead giveaway but i gotta warm you up here it goes let's see uh is that the the sushi from american sushi uh, maybe. What's a uh, poo from uh, Yu Yu Hakusho? Is that the final answer? 
Oh, come on. If, if, if it's if, if, if you're lagging behind. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I completely trust you on this one. All right. Well, guess what? Yeah. You are correct. There's the, the drawing that I took yeah. it from. Wow. Great start, boys. Great start. All right. Well, the next one uh, is probably going to be a little easy, honestly, if you have any culture whatsoever. Oh, good. But I don't know. You might get it wrong. On the oh. now. <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> I know who this is. I don't think. Yeah, I, I know. I know he's from. Uh huh. Or like, I just don't know if he has an actual fucking name aside from the meme name of just being called. I the think nose. it's the nose thing. I'm. Pr- like Rata makes like Rata from Rank Ten Yu Gi Oh is like only the nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we can safely say the nose nose thing or nose boy from Berserk. You got well, it correct. I, I would have went with. I was mainly looking for nose boy, but nose thing uh-huh. slash the nose. I would That's, also said. <laughs> See, look at how startled boy. he is. Look at how startled he is. Man, nose boys are emote. So yeah, he is very <laughs> perplexed. Oh, <laughs> it's the the answer is Danny DeVito. If you type in no nose boy b o y b o b o y from Berserk, <laughs> it comes up. It comes up Danny DeVito. I swear to God. That's awesome. The omnipotent Danny DeVito at that. All right. Go, doing good so far, boys. I'm very proud Easy. of you. Very proud yeah. of you. So here's where it might get a little, a little tougher. Okay. All right. Simple. Simple. Uh, no, it's really not. Okay, great. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Excuse. <me. laughs> All right, Wyatt. Can we <laughs> try to get to an an anime this may be from? <laughs> that. He's, I think he's from Cowboy I was thinking Bebop. that. I was thinking that. I want you to know I was thinking that. I just... Uh, he's like uh, Spike's fucking friend. I forgot what the, he's. I forgot what his fucking name is. Spike's friend? But, uh, I don't know, this, boys. Like, I'm, uh, I'm going to need an answer here. This also looks like... Um, it, <laughs> the thing that also came to my mind is a titan, but I don't think they have hair. At least not like that. Oh wait, he's not he's not jet black, never mind. It's I was thinking it was from Cowboy Bebop. Oh, right okay. Um I still I I do think he could be from Cowboy Bebop. I just don't know who it is. Well, I'm gonna need a, an and anime I'm, and need, a name here soon. Oh boys. great. Well I'll right. give you like a good thirty more seconds to think 30 about. Thirty seconds and no chat cheating. Okay. Oh yeah, no Get chat, chat cheating. Out of here. No chat cheating. Get that out of here. Um I'm also just kind of look. Oh, could this be from like a Studio Ghibli movie? I've gone specifically off of things that Noble has, or I'm sorry, Wyatt has seen. Okay. Um. Is is he is he the fucking is he from Monster? Because you talked about that earlier. I don't know. We have to have. All right. What's our know. final answer? Is, is it is it is it Lung, is it Lunge? That detective. Lunge from Monster. Is that your final answer? That's I'll bump in with answer. him. How about you? All right. Well, unfortunately, that is both incorrect. It oh, is no. the gluttonous titan. From it is a titan. A- attack on Titan. Ah, look at him. It's a titan. Th- there's the, uh, the side profile. <laughs> oh, oh that's It's the one with the really fuck. big head looking really dumb, and he's all short compared to the other titans. Oh, how could you guys get I that said wrong? I'm so mad. Wow. You even. I thought it was a free. I thought I thought it was a freeze frame of like something. Like, <laughs> I was, <laughs> see, I'll be honest. When you guys said like, Kaba Bebop, I was like, oh, they got to be pulling my leg. There's no way they actually think that. And then like, you guys kept talking about it. I'm like, what? <laughs> no, I thought, it, I thought I thought, I thought you were like doing one of those like, like freeze nasty. frame from Weird. an anime. Like, 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 like a bad I mean, I could have. Like like, <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea between. for next week. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, oh, uh, unfortunately, you didn't get the points there. You no. know, sometimes it'd be like that. Well, I... Like, if you made like a... If you made like a... a, a pink blop and then a bunch of yellow <laughs> spikes i'm like oh it's go <laughs> <laughs> well because that's how bad super yeah is. Oh, <laughs> you're <no>. right <laughs> but uh the question is can you get this absolute chad of a new character right here easy oh you think so that's uh that's oh i don't know his name but that's from Yu-Gi-Oh for sure he's one of the uh the, the paradox, paradox brothers, brothers. yeah well the question is what is Fuck. his name uh d- I mean, you can you can be it's, you can think you're right all you want, but without a name, I don't know, man. I feel like it's y- like Yin or Yang or something like that. I they they had some stupid name together. 
Like, their their names are in a pair, for sure. I think he's Para, because he's, he's the first they're, brother, or whatever. I didn't... I think okay. they're I think they're literally, Para and Docs? I think they're <laughs> yeah, I think it's so stupid. Okay, I'll, you I'll go for with? sure go with that, yeah. I'm down. You are correct! It's that Para! is Para <laughs> from the Paradox Brothers. Oh, wow. why are you carrying me right now? I cannot, I cannot believe you remember <laughs> that their names were actually Para and Docs. I thought that was the stupidest thing ever. <laughs> <That's> incredible. <laughs> Some Look how shocked he is. He's, He's very perplexed and confused. Wow. You, oh, doing man. better than I expected, for sure. That was good. That was a really good one. So I have two more. Two oh, more. Oh, no. Okay. All right. All right. Came back. All right. So this guy is now on the stream. Face <laughs> oh, I, that's one of uh, Arlong's pirate. Like, I'm in Arlong. He's One Piece for sure. You think so? I think my video... I think my video is buffering. Let me it's, refresh. Oh, it's One that, Piece. 100% that got, One Piece. Yeah, that's that's a One Piece character. And is it? It's either uh, Arlong Park or Fishman Island. He's one of the like fish guys. No, I think he's from like Sabody. I think wasn't he like? Uh, fuck. I, I'm gonna be honest. I have no clue where to even begin with his name. Not a clue, huh? No. <laughs> Not even he... like the semblance of you know possibility. Like, uh, Good Smile McGee? Yeah, is that what you want to go with? <laughs> no, it's not, but... Wyatt, what do you think? Um... What the... <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I know... Like, it's on the tip of my tongue. Like, he's not a character that I even had... Like, no one says his name more than... Oh, wait! Like, he's from, like... Is he on, like, Whitebeard's crew or some shit? Or, no, no, he's from Shanks' crew. He's, like, uh... He comes up there... To talk to Whitebeard, and he's like, "Oh, don't you know who Shanks is?" And like, "What?" But this guy doesn't have a name, I, so it's no name, and it's from One Piece. Is that, is that what you guys we're going go with? with? He has a name. I I refuse to believe Brandon picked someone without a name, but I don't have the slightest clue where to begin. So we have the the anime you're saying is One Piece, but you have no name. Is that the final answer? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, I am actually baffled that why it was like onto this ball because uh, that is indeed the character. That you were thinking of. So what? his name is Rockstar, and he Rockstar. this guy has a 94 billion berry bounty. I just want to throw that out there. And he he waltzed up to deliver a message to Whitebeard, and he is what? one of the new recruits Does... on Shanks's crew. I can't believe you knew that. That's I unbelievable. I am baffled <laughs> that you got that close. But you guys get one point for uh, oh. you know for getting the the anime for sure. Like I almost want to give you some pity points because you were that close, but I'm not going to do it because I'm a <laughs> of course not. <laughs> That's yeah. super impressive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at that face, though. I mean, he's, he's really uh, ticked off. Okay, well, moving on. The final one. The final All right. one. On the screen right now. What? <laughs> um, that's, that, that's, okay, that's the fucking bird that takes, like, so when Luffy is hanging out yeah. with Zoro, that's like, that's a purpleized what the fuck moment. Uh -huh. I'm gonna kill this fucking <laughs> yep. bird! <laughs> so, well, we've got the anime again for sure then. Maybe. And he like grabs his stupid head. <laughs> I can, now this one I can yeah. visualize this scene. But. Any names is, here, boys? Is it like. I wanna say it's something really like dumb, like flappy or something. <laughs> That's don't laugh. <laughs> I don't like that you laughed at that. I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm laughing because you actually got it. You don't know. It's not. It's not okay. Uh, the, this pr one one piece predates a lot of things, but I don't think it invented Flappy. <laughs> no, they could, I mean, they could have had a bird named Flappy. I don't know. What do you think, Wyatt? Then pink bird. Pink thing. bird thing. I'm no. more confident in Flappy uh, than that. Pinky? pinky. I, I'll pink. for sure go with Pinky. What the frick? You got it right. It's Pinky. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Wyatt. <laughs> its name is actually freaking Pinky. What? Why are you so clutch at this? What? <laughs> I was just scrolling through freaking uh, One Piece characters to pick a really <laughs> random fuck? name because there's so many. And like I came across Pinky and I was like, what the hell is this? Oh, it's a bird. They'll never get this. Uh huh. That's. <laughs> I'm baffled. Wow. Out of possible twelve points, you got oh nine. Oh my god. That's that is a, a passing grade. I am that amazed. That has to be like that has to be in the hall of fame of art activity right yeah, here. Yeah. Fact. Uh, wow. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I'm giving a round of applause, bro. My Thank god. Thank you. <laughs>
So I guess, okay, I do have a final question while, while he's gone. What did you think when I first messaged you asking you to be on here? Like, what went through your mind? My first thought is, and I don't want to offend you or anything. I won't be offended. But I, <laughs> I, was, I was like, this, this has got to be a prank, right? Because <laughs> no, one, no, no one, like I said earlier, like no one really reaches out to say hi uh-huh. to anyone. It's all like public yeah. stuff. So like, when I got like, and you also name dropped uh, too yep. spooky. Over here. I was like, I'm like, this this got to like, this got to be like some kind of uh, roast or something because like I, I'm a nobody and that's kind of like how. But um, like, cause I, I I make videos that don't get like, if I had like a I, I feel like, and this is my perspective sure. like YouTube. If you don't have like at least 10k subs or 100k, uh-huh. like you're not considered important on the website. Yeah. But, like, so, me at 5K and, you know, you guys collectively, because you guys are partners, yeah. right? Like, you guys are, like, f- you guys are half a million. It's like... Well, I'm not no, on that channel. There's... I have nothing... No, too Spooky is all Brandon. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, have you heard of him before I reached out to you? Yeah, I watched uh, some of his top tens before. Uh-huh. I've been... I, th- I think he can go back on his histories, and I've, I've been sub to him for, like, forever. Oh, like, really? Okay. Back when kind of did a mass unsub mm-hmm. after a while because like because i saw his name pop up and i was like i wasn't really watching his videos uh-huh. um super recently so i matt did a mass unsub and then i just remember his gin ichimaru yep so i'll <laughs> so i'm like i subbed again mm-hmm. but like i i because like i kept saw it like on the left hand side it says subscriptions and it'll say like on my side it'll say like 24 frames of yeah. nick aaron clary Ad- adult swim uh, now I see you on the left-hand side, American uh-huh. Sushi, right under, right underneath all time tens and above Android developers. Okay. <laughs> so it does, it does it all uh-huh, in alphabetical. Sure. So I, because hit, because his is literally number, a yep. number. <laughs> his is top chart. Hey. So I did, so I did a mass unsub for for a little bit, but I was sub to him yeah, for a long time. We, <laughs> but yeah. I asked him what he thought when I reached out to him, and he thought we were pranking him. <laughs> At first, yeah. anyway, and then I wanted to talk uh-huh. to you guys and like. I was just curious because it was totally out of the blue for sure. And like, um, I just like saw one of your videos pop up recently and I was like, oh, Berserk, that's really interesting. Let me watch it. And then I watched it. I'm like, oh, this would be really cool to talk to this guy. And so I went, found your Twitter, yeah. followed you, and DM'd you. And the rest is history. It was a great sequence yeah. of events that like <laughs> it all came together like that. It's Yeah, it's really interesting. Because <laughs> <laughs> like I said at the beginning, dude, I was like, baffled that i just found your channel like literally two days before evan was like hey we should have this guy on the podcast i was like oh mm-hmm. i know that guy <laughs> <laughs> um i'm glad you reached out to me and i'm i'm glad you guys are actually really awesome yeah dudes. well thank you <laughs> i'm humbled so, like um because sometimes when you when you meet people or like not meet people but like see people on stream and they're more like relaxed or they're more like mm-hmm. themselves you there's like an old phrase being like your heroes are assholes and like <laughs> you know when you actually meet someone that's reflective of the personality on youtube or whatnot and they're mm-hmm. actually like who they are like you guys are pretty cool well so. thank you thank you i hope i hope we can be hope hopefully we're friends after oh, this for sure and absolutely chill out. yeah we'll have and to also have again. you back at a later time <laughs> yeah we will and thank you fact. for coming on <laughs> yeah it's an honor to yeah. have you no thank you for having me on well it's an honor i hope on. you're ready though because we're gonna finish off and hopefully hopefully you'll you'll <laughs> leave with a good experience because maybe this epic game will just ruin this, everything for it you sure and you'll could. be you'll just like never want to talk to us again it could happen <laughs> <laughs> so the Imagine new this. game <laughs> i have for you guys today so this is the first evan is also hearing about it it yeah, is I called remember. the video <laughs> game show because it's about video games but it's also a game show <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> so basically it's gonna be a uh, <laughs> trivia involving many different video games because i know uh, why you are a huge video game fan. Evan is as well. So I figured, you know what? Yeah. Why don't I quiz you guys? Cool. Isn't that what you came here for, to be quizzed? Man, that's really cool. Thanks, so <laughs> so let me just uh, get a little notepad here to keep track. You guys can this already. Uh, letters awesome. down. Boom. Okay. So I have ten questions for you today. How this is going to work is we're going to alternate um, who goes first. So more okay. or less, you're both going to be... Um, you have the opportunity to both answer the same question. So theoretically, if you wanted to be a jerk, you could just um, both be like, all right, I'm going to pick A, and then 
the next person be like, you know what, I'm going to also pick A. And you can just do that the whole way down and end up with the same score. Oh, wonderful. I, I, so I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, you, you got some knowledge behind here. Okay, so you're I'd gonna, like to win. Okay, so basically, uh, between you two, <laughs> you two can decide who's going to go first. And so basically, I'll put up the first question, I'll read it off, and I'll give you the options. And then whoever decides to go first can be like, all right, I think it's A. The next okay. person also gets to choose on the same question. So you're both still answering uh -huh. the same question together, but you're going to alternate who does it first in case right. that's like a giveaway or anything okay. like that. It'll just be one point per question. Whoever wins out on top is the epic gamer. Oh, okay. Well, as our esteemed guest, I think you should go first, Wyatt. Okay, cool. All right, sure. So uh, any other questions before we get into it, boys? Uh, I'm going to turn my chat off. No, I think I'm good. Oh, good, good question. Um... I will have the question up on screen, but I will also read it to you in case you just don't want to look at all, but yeah. So, okay. here we go then. Question number one. In the popular 2008 horror game Dead Space, how many unique ways can you die? A. 27 B. 35 C. 50 Or D. More than 50 Wyatt, what are you thinking? <laughs> Uh, let's see. I, I think, like, back of the box, they would advertise it something like a plus sign, so I'm going to say D. Okay. Evan? See, I I have a similar line of logic, but I think they would say they're... <sighs> see, that line of logic really sticks with me, but I'm going to pick C. I think they'd say 50 different ways. Okay. Well, the correct answer is D. More than <sighs> 50 ways to die. That Yay. is one point <laughs> towards Wyatt. All right. Oh, man. Wow, I cannot believe Evan. You are you epic gamer? Apparently I can't not. Get, I can't get carried in this one. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Number two. What year was Por uh, Persona Four released? Oh, this should be an easy oh, one no. for you guys. It's not. <laughs> so we have A, two thousand seven, B, two thousand nine, C, two thousand eight, or D, two thousand ten. Evan, it is your floor to go first. Okay, so. Is this the specific, um, like the original one, not the localization, correct? Uh, I'm going to assume yes. This is according to the Wikipedia article. Oh, it was wonderful. <laughs> Good so, job. So um, I'm hoping that, uh, that, like, that's all I'm going with. That's your only okay. hint. Gotcha. I'm going to say 2008. See. Okay. Wyatt, what are you thinking? Uh, it, it was in development in 2007. I know that, but uh, I think it was released in 2008. Okay. I hate, I hate oh. doing that ju jumping you know, if on. If you this. think you're right, you think you're right. Sometimes you have to do it. So you are both correct. It is C, oh, 2008. Sweet. So you made the right choice to double up. I, I respect it. I respect it. I certainly do. You know, all right. Number three. Which popular anime had a canceled Sega game? Was it A, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? B, Akira? C, Dragon Ball? Or D, Fist of the North Star? Wyatt, you begin. I think I know this. I never heard of any Akira video game or even in development. I know there's like stuff for like the any uh, Super Nintendo for JoJo, but I think it might be. Was it? No, that was back in the. That's back in the era when they both had their own exclusivity. So I want to say C. I think. Okay. Ooh. Dragon <clears throat> right, Ball. I think. I'm gonna say the D. Floor. There's a bunch of. I'm gonna say D. Fist of the North Star. Ooh. Okay. I'm pretty confident. Well, the answer is you are both incorrect. It was awesome. B, Akira. Akira had a uh, canceled Sega game. You know, some of the the files have actually been recently released, but it it was never oh, uh, really? it never made it past development. So. Oh man. Yeah, unfortunately, you both stunk on that one. Dang I absolutely it. trusted Wyatt. Thing. <laughs> he never heard of it. <laughs> I was like, I don't think that's right then. All right, number four. Dig Dug is considered one of the most popular arcade games of all time. All right. But just how popular is it? Oh, we great. A, third, B, sixth, C, 11th, or D, the 15th most popular of all time. Evan, you have the floor. Most popular. Oh, okay, I need to see this question again. Most popular what? Again, arcade game. Arcade game. Oh, okay. Well, Pac-Man has to beat it, so there's no way it's it's one. I'm going to say it's third. I'm going to say it's A. Okay. Why? What are you thinking? There's there's Donkey Kong. There's Pac, There's Pac-Man. Does Miss Pac-Man count as its own game? It probably does, but I don't think it's more popular. There's, there's Tetris. I would, I would say B. Ooh. And the correct answer is B. 
Dig God. Dug is the sixth <laughs> most popular arcade game of all time. Wow, Evan. Oh, I thought you were I'm an epic struggling. gamer, but apparently you're not. You're barely <laughs> even Dig a Dug gamer. <laughs> yeah, Dig Dug is great. <laughs> so, uh, moving yeah. straight on to number five. Which <laughs> Mortal Kombat character began as a secret fight, but later became oh. a playable fighter? I know we have this. A, Chameleon, B, Jade, C, Hydro, or D, all of the above. Wyatt, take oh, it shit. away. Uh, was it, is, I think Chameleon was like Green Ninja that was like um, super like coveted in like the first game. I don't really remember Hydro at all. I know Jade. Uh, Chameleon? I'll go all with right. that one. I don't know what... I, I've never heard <laughs> I've of never Hydro. Heard of Hydro I don't, I don't either. I Evan. think, so my th immediate thought was smoke, but that's not a choice. So there's my issue. I'm going to say <laughs> D. I don't think you'd put all of the above if it wasn't the answer. Ooh, well, I tricked you. Because it's awesome. definitely only one of these answers. So the correct answer is B, Jade. Really? So in Mortal Kombat 2, we had Smoke, Jade, and Noob Saibot huh? as secret fightable characters that later became playable in uh, the third game onward. So Chameleon was a playable character in a uh, trilogy but he was never, like, a secret fight. And Hydro just doesn't exist in the main games. So, <laughs> I pranked you! Neither of you got it right. Oh, oh man. <laughs> oh, look at me tricking you. Isn't that great? It, man. <laughs> something, all right. I'm glad to have these two epic gamers with me today. So now moving on to number <laughs> six. In the game Pac-Man, what is the name of the four ghosts in Japanese? So you'll have to excuse my uh, pronunciation here. But for A, we have... Uh, Okakeru, Damu, Hashidu, and Shitagu for A. For B, we have Fickle, Chaser, Ambusher, and Stupid. For C, <laughs> we have Inky, Blinky, Pinky, and Clyde. And then D, we have Muki, Kuki, Suki, and Baka. Ivan, Evan, I believe you have the floor on this All one. All right. <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean... I don't think it's Baka. I, I feel like that's just too on the nose. Okay. I, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> um, I'm going to pick stupid. I'm going to pick B. Okay. <laughs> I think it's stupid. What are you thinking there, Wyatt? Um, Baka and stupid, um, they mean mm -hmm. the same thing. I don't know what's, I don't know if Suki actually means ambush, but like, I don't know if the Japanese use, like, the literal English names, because you say it's in Japanese, so I'm going to say D, because those are, like, I know Baka yeah. means stupid, but I don't know if the other ones mean Well, the correct answer is actually B. Oh. So, to, to make these fake answers, <laughs> I think is. I took um, either Chaser or Ambusher to get one of the words for D, and then I just changed the letters for all of them except for Baka, just to throw you off. <laughs> so, Evan um, actually gets the proof point. Proof I I, I just was amazed that one of their names what was actually dumb just process. stupid. <laughs> like, one of their names is just stupid. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I thought that was really funny. So, that's why I chose that oh. one. Ha, ha. Ha. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven. In SpongeBob SquarePants, battle for Bikini Bottom. Oh, no wonder you asked <laughs> about this earlier. <laughs> Which character had an animation for drowning in the code that was never used in the main game? We have A, Sandy, B, Plankton, C, Squidward, or D, Mr. Krabs. Wyatt, take it away. Which character had an animation for drowning? Mm -hmm. um, the only character that's actually playable is is Sandy in this situation. So, um, and this is this is base battle for Bikini Bottom. So, I'll say Sandy because she's actually a playable character. I don't think she. I mean. But I think she. I think she does. Like I think she salutes like the American salute when she hits the goo or whatever. But like the other characters straight up aren't playable. So. So going with A. Moving on I'm, to yeah. Evan. The the person who came into my mind immediately was Plankton. So I'm just gonna go with my gut. I have no logic to it, but I'm gonna pick Plankton. Well. Wyatt is correct. <laughs> it is Sandy Cheeks, who had a drowning animation that was never used in the game. Congratulations. I'm glad that, you know, the foreshadowing came full circle it for an absolute <laughs> banger of a question. Alrighty then, we're getting to the end, boys. We're moving on to number eight. 
Oh no. Which of these pop culture characters are unlockable in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3? We have A. Wolverine, B. Darth Maul, C. Doom Guy, or D. All of the above. Evan, the floor is yours. All right, so I know. I'm gonna pick D again. I'm gonna pick D again. I'm gonna pick D again. Okay. I don't want to give away my thought process, but I'm gonna pick D. Oh, all right, Wyatt. How you following up? I can't imagine like Doom Guy in Tony Hawk, but I can't imagine Wolverine and Darth Maul though. But um, I don't really remember playing Pro, uh, Pro Skater Three that much. I remember the first two games, so. Uh. All of the above. Oh. <laughs> All right. So you both are correct. Yep. <laughs> so the uh, the little deciding factor is that Doom Guy is a PC only unlock for the port of the game, <laughs> but they are all unlockable within Pro Skater Three. Congratulations. I, I knew A and boys. B were. I had the same thought process as you, Wyatt. I knew A and B were. So I was like, D C probably is. Boom! Pranked you the first time, but not this <laughs> time. <laughs> all right. Number nine. Eat Lead, The Return of Matt Hazard, received what score from IGN? So we have A, 3 out of 10, B, 3.8 out of 10, C, 4 out of 10, or D, 5.2 out of 10. Uh, Wyatt, it is your turn to decide first. I don't even know what Matt Hazard yeah, is. Yeah, I've never heard of this either. <laughs> the only... Uh, so, just as context for the game, it is basically a Duke Nukem ripoff. That's all I will tell you. <laughs> Do not let that, that sway your, your opinion either way. You I must know it like in your heart. I thought the title of the question when you said eat lead, but it's the video game. No, that's, that's the game. Great. Uh, well, I gave Duke Nukem a 3 out of 10. I, 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 I'm assuming, even though this, I, I have no idea what game this is, it has to be better than that piece of shit, so I'm saying C. All right. Evan. What are you thinking? Um, not much. That's the issue. I'm okay. gonna pick B. So <laughs> there All you go. Right. Well, you both are incorrect. It is D. Five point two out of ten. Gosh darn dang. Have you ever played it? Uh actually I uh I have. In fact, <laughs> I don't remember anything about it, but I okay. know that I've played it because I, <laughs> I think I might even still have it, to be honest. But yeah, that's about it. I don't remember <laughs> anything about the game, so it probably wasn't very memorable. Moving on to the final question. Oh, Which man. character was datamined in Mario Kart Double Dash, but not present in the final game? We have A, Donkey Kong Jr., B, Shy Guy, C, Monty Mole, or D, Magikoopa. Evan, finish it off. Oh, wonderful. Um, I don't know. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, I feel like Shy Guy's... Maybe it's not in it because it's like eh, he's in Mario Kart 8, and it was like excited. But I don't know that Magic Koopa has been in any. I'm gonna pick A, just because I don't think it's either of those I talked about. Okay, Wyatt. The final question: What are you thinking? I know Monty Mole is in the future games, and is Donkey Kong Jr. in any of the games? I don't because if he if he if he if he was in like a future game, I feel more confident in that one. I don't know. I don't know who Donkey Kong Jr. is, <laughs> <laughs> but I picked him. He's that. He's he's the he's the fucking like baby one. He's got like the the onesie or whatever. <laughs> I know Diddy Kong. That's the one I would. I thought it meant. Yeah. I was just very confused. Monty Mole's in the future game, so I'm gonna say him. All right. So the correct answer is actually Donkey Kong Jr. Yes. <laughs> So, Let's go. basically, instead of Diddy Kong, they were considering Donkey Kong Jr., but they switched it to Diddy. No. Dang it. <laughs> so, the final score, Wyatt finishes with a total of five points, and Evan finishes with a total of four. Dang it. Dang it. That means <laughs> Wyatt is the epic gamer of the video game show. I salute you, Wyatt. Awesome. <laughs> Great job. And Evan, you need to I be a bet. little more epic next time. I should try better and be smarter, but it's yeah, okay. Yeah, you should, but you won't. <laughs> or nope. will you? I guess we'll have to find out if we ever play this again. Oh, I hope not. But uh, <laughs> anyways, why? what do you have going on? Tell us uh, where the people can find you. I posted your link in stream chat, but 
give us some information about where you are, how to find you, and what you're working on. Heck yeah. So you can find me on YouTube and Twitter. It's uh, Noble Absinthe. Uh, named myself after uh, a band drink in Europe because I thought it was cool. And I'm currently working on a love letter series to Persona 4. Uh, I have a script written up for Yu Narakami. I'm calling it the Character Compendium. Ooh, and, I like uh, that name. Me three. So it's going to be like Yu Narakami, Persona 4 Golden, Character mm -hmm. Compendium. Just something really easy for search engine yeah. results. And I'm just going to talk about the history of their... A little light glossing over the persona they use, like the Japanese lore mm -hmm. of it, the tarot card they're, the tarot card and what it represents, and just narratively speaking of like what the character is supposed to do um, as an umbrella phrase. So like, Yu represents the fool in, in Japanese mythology. Um, his tarot is that of the fool, and his persona is Izanagi. And I'll be going over that, and yeah, I'll be working on a whole series of videos for that. And then possibly interspliced a bunch of random game reviews, which I'm completely open for suggestions on any bad game or good game you guys want to drop in there. I can do emulation, or I can just straight up just buy the game and add it to my collection. I'm a game collector, so it's, it's good for me. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. All of his links will be in the description below. Please go check them out. Wyatt, we hope to have you back on a future episode for sure, if you're down, of course. Oh, I 100% down. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much for coming on, sort of short notice and, and spurred it. It was great to have you. Indeed. Thank you so much. Well, right, to end you. this off, everybody, this is the American Sushi Podcast. You can find us on... Uh, Spotify, Twitch, YouTube, and even Apple Podcasts. So actually, I one little thing I wanted to do to end this off is, uh, you know, we got a little review over here on um, the oh, Apple Podcast, yeah, please and I figured this. I'd read it off just for uh, <laughs> the people who were interested in it. Let me just bring it up here. All right. So, so far we have uh, one review, and uh, I just wanted to read that off for everybody. So if you want a review read out on uh, a future podcast, you know, maybe uh, check us out over there and leave a review. Maybe leave a rating, you know, just check us out. So from Ape Enthusiast, we have a five-star rating, and it says, Great podcast. Even though I mostly watch this on Twitch, I had to go over to Apple Podcasts and give it a five-star review because it was so good. Thank you so much, Ape Enthusiast. Appreciate you. Uh, you can find all the links to everything below. And uh, also follow us on Twitter at Sushi Podcast. On, That's wait, us. It, oh yeah, and we are sushi Twitch podcast on Twitter. at American underscore sushi. under we got the under underscore baby. Score. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> how we end these off is I one of us. Uh, it's my turn today. We ask a really uh, random and epic question. So to leave it off today, what video game do you believe is a ten out of ten? Leave your comments Ooh. in the comments section below, please. We're <laughs> eagerly awaiting your answers we want to see them okay that's all <laughs> thanks for coming thanks Thank for you everyone by. thanks for rolling by